represents. I started off by adding up our checks and other expenses for the month, but that only totaled 534. So I'm trying to figure out how we get to 1 million three. Um, it's an accumulation over uh, numerous years of various uh, allocations of uh, the way that we spend uh, uh, money in the general fund and share it with the other uh, two types of funds. So is this not representative of this month's spending? No. 
No, a, a balance is an amount, on a, a, a balance sheet, mm -hmm. a balance is an amount of uh, uh, an accumulation of debits and credits over a period of time as stated at a specific period of time. If you look at next month's balance sheet, mm -hmm. um, when the uh, uh, 500, uh, no, no, not 500, but it's about 200 and something thousand dollars of actual checks that are written against that account. Mm -hmm. It'll be that much lower, uh, offset by the amount of revenue that we've taken. In. Okay, so I, in trying to ascertain what that amount stood for, I noticed for August, the August balance sheet was one million three, but in July it was three hundred and ninety-one thousand. So that led me to believe from July of 2018 to August, this. This spending increased by seven hundred thousand dollars. No, that's not. That's so that's not, not how you determine that. No. Okay. That's in the change, but I I I'd have to look at the July statements myself. So I don't, mean, I don't have those in front of me. Well, I have the balance sheet, but that's not the information that compiles this number, correct? You get that from something else. I just have the balance sheet. That's all I brought. So what I'm trying to say is from month to month when this figure fluctuates, it doesn't have anything to do with month to month you're using some figures from years ago? No, it's an accumulation. So then if in, if in July cash was, and, and this does represent an amount that we spent, correct? That's why it's in parentheses? It, well, uh, in this case, See, we take, we take everything in through the general fund uh, cash account and then we allocate it to the other funds, so. Right, and your investments are positive of eight million. Your receivables include property tax. So I'm just trying to figure out. We, we're, we're, so the investments are actually 10 million, 620,000. Well, I'm looking at a different month, but what I'm trying to say is you're already accounting for your property tax and you're already accounting for your investments. I would think this, number in parentheses should represent, you know, I'm not asking for you to identify every single penny, it seems difficult, so you're saying this represents spending across all the funds, but it is spending, correct? Yeah. Okay, so my question... I mean, if you want, it's, yeah, I can send you a copy of the general ledger and, and show you. Okay, I, that, that would help, thank you. And then, then now next to investments. I was wondering if you could tell me what the, all right, I'm in August, okay. For August investments were at 10 million. What investments does that represent? What, what uh, type of investments? Is that mm -hmm. what yes, like do we have more than one? I mean, do you have a Oh yeah, we have several. So what? what we invest uh, according to the policy in uh, certificates of deposit, no more than uh, two hundred fifty thousand dollars per uh, per bank, uh, which is uh, the extent of uh, FDIC insurance. Uh, so we don't do uninsured investments. Right. Do you know um, what that amount is in terms of certificate deposit? I do not. Um, yeah, we also have a number of uh, treasuries, uh, which are uh, which are the highest and most secure investment that you can make. Mm -hmm. uh, those are represented by T bills, um, and uh, uh, we also have. Uh, I can't remember. If if it's liquidated or not, but we also have uh, some federal agency uh, bonds, but if, we may not have those. I understand. All right, so is everything, would you say then we have $10 million in readily available cash or no? I'd say we have $10,852,014. All right, so it, available cash. Yeah, you know, it's, it's I mean, readily... It's still maybe in like six-month certificates or something like that. Well, you know, I, I got, I got 30-day T-bills, I got 60-day, we have, you know, 60-day T-bills, 90-day T-bills. Um, we have some uh, CDs that go out uh, five years, some of the, you know, ladder all the way up. So, you know, I mean, I'm not sure what the question is. I'm trying to you know, understand. I'm trying to understand what the ten million dollar investments represent. And That's then right. my next question is: Do we have just one broker who handles all of this for us? Uh, yeah, we do it through uh, Fifth Third Bank. Oh, Fifth Third Bank is who we use. Yes. 
All right, uh, and then my other question is, so then do they um, send you like online statuses every month where you could figure yeah, out? Yeah, we'll get a statement every month. We'll, and that's where this number is derived from? Yeah. Okay, um, well that takes care of my questions for the balance sheet. Um, can I, does anyone have any other questions? So I don't monopolize all the time, but I do have questions about the check register. All right, let's move on to the next item and get that on the uh, table, okay? Sure, sure, no problem. All right, I'll entertain a motion now to approve the payment of fields for operating expenses of $240,000, $247,000, $7.78. Payroll expenses of $284,403.48 and special reserve expenses of $52,745.88 for a total monthly expense of $584,157.14. Do you have such a motion? Motion. I said. Okay. Um, yes. And who has questions? Um, I, I have some. Yes, Carolyn? Um, and I'm on page 15. Um, let's see. Um, there's Alliance Entertainment, and then I saw Alliance Printers. So I'm guessing these are two different companies. They just have the same, same name? Yeah, that's correct. What's Alliance Entertainment? Is that um, something we buy? Is we it a purchase DVDs from them? Okay. Possibly video games or other things like that. Okay. And then, um, then I was trying to go down the list, looking at names of individuals, thinking they're employees. Um, I recall um, in the past when there was an employee reimbursement, it said EE. -E. I thought that meant employee expense. But I didn't see that on any of these, so I'm wondering if some of these names may be people who I, you know, maybe worked for us, or I mean, maybe provided some type of service. So as I go down the line, I see Angelique Overland. Mm -hmm. Is she an employee, or did she provide a service? Angelique Overland is not an employee. I suggest you look at page 19 because yeah. it's got the account descriptions on the running on the side, and that would tell you. In her case, it's a lost book refund. She lost the book. She paid for it. Found the book, brought it back, and had to give so it So it's a back. patron refund. Okay. And then if I wanted to figure out who the employees are, mm -hmm. I could figure that out on page 19. Well, 19, 20, 21. So it's, like it's there. That's okay. That's fine. Well, I won't. I won't take up your time. Then, um, as I'm going down, I noticed there is a BB holiday decorating for 28.53.82. What's what's that for? That we're going to be decorating the exterior of the library in exactly the same way that we did last year. What's that for? Two thousand eight hundred fifty-three dollars and eighty-two cents. It's on page fifteen. I thought we talked about um, not trying to spend money unnecessarily. Uh, I don't think the board came to the conclusion that uh, that was an unnecessary expense. So twenty-eight hundred dollars for holiday decorating isn't. Extreme. I mean, we couldn't do it for less. We could do less for less. But exactly. all, we're do, all we're doing is decorating the trees in the front. But it did take the workers a whole day with a cherry picker, and um, and then they put a gigantic wreath on the front and they put up some garland. And you know, I feel like if the village spending a hundred thousand dollars, that we would look like a very dark, sad corner of Niles if we didn't put something up. So that was why we did try it last year. We got a lot. Nice compliments from the patrons, and so I did not get direction from the board to not do that this year. So I did go ahead and sign a contract for it. And that's in line with what we spent last year? It is, yes. Well, it doesn't make it, you know, a, a logical expense, and unfortunately, we can never compare ourselves with the village. I wish we could make as much money as they do in a lot of their events. We don't make money. So everything we spend comes from the taxpayers. So that just sort of stood out. Then the next thing is comment. I see the bill is 8991.03. And in your description, Summer, I know you mentioned that it has been dropping. I just had a question. The past couple of months, the employees were absolutely freezing in here. So I was wondering what type of system you have where you, can you or can you not regulate the temperature? Uh, we can't regulate the temperature, and uh, every room has a thermostat, 
Uh, thermostat is connected to what's called a VAV box, which opens and closes uh, based upon whether uh, there's heat or uh, cool to be uh, uh, supplied to the room. And it's centrally located uh, or centrally managed by a, um, a piece of software which allows us to uh, monitor in real time and, uh, and adjust in real time. So then it's, it's adjusted. I got, I got one. Oh, go right ahead. Um, uh, from time to time, we have, on warm days, issues getting uh, cool air to the furthest reach, basically the end of the trunk. And so what we need to do is run it longer and harder in order to supply air to the rooms of the, at the end of the trunk. Uh, unfortunately, at times, uh, it causes people earlier along the trunk to be uh, to be a little chilled. And we try to do everything that we can from opening doors, closing doors, making sure that you know that we have it on early enough, but not too early, so that we're earning extra money uh, in order to uh, cool the in order to cool the house. The um, combat bill uh, year over year. Calendar year 2017 compared to calendar year 2016 is down $11,000. That's terrific. Uh, that's not that's not a rate variance. That's a, that's a kilowatt hour rate variance. Uh, I think it represents about 137,000 kilowatts. Uh, the bills at this time of year, because of the cooling demands uh, related to the warm weather, cause those bills to, on average, be a little bit higher. But based on the information that we get from Commonwealth Edison, we're still anywhere from three to five percent below similar buildings in, uh, in the area, according to what the reporting was. Yes, I, I remember that information as well. Thanks. Um, what areas of the library do you have difficulty cooling, which is why you need to increase the air conditioning? Um, one example is uh, the administrative offices. The uh, the corner that's most difficult to uh, uh, heat and cool is uh, the director's office because that's right at the end of the uh, of the trunk. Is it the windows or just the fact she's so far? Uh, it's probably a combination. Okay. I guess, but honestly, I'll be honest with you, for people to be freezing walking through here, I, I would like to think we could figure something out. It's only her office, it's the only office. No, 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 it's not only my office. It's an example. Here. I don't know all of them, but that's, you know, that's, you know, that's a real example. Okay, you know, well, what I'm trying to say is for $8,000 and they're walking around here, ready to put on a winter coat, maybe we should, you know, just spend a little time figuring out what the areas are and what other options there are. I think they spent a great deal of time tweaking the system. Dave and Rich together because it's computerized now. He is always going around taking the temperature. It's just really hard because you've got the doors opening all the time and letting in the, the cool there air. Aren't or the air. Here. It, well, I mean, it's just, it's a constant battle and Dave works on it very hard all the time. I just have to defend the fact that he works very hard on this. It's just hard to do it. Who, you, Dave. Head of maintenance. Oh, Dave Dabrowski works together with Rich because it's a computerized system. So Rich is head of IT also works with it. Okay, and I don't know that it's really that cold in here anyway. Yeah. Oh, today All right. it's terrific. Okay. Okay, then right. I have another question. So fifth third for one thousand eight hundred twenty four dollars and ninety eight cents might that be the fee we pay them to for to be our broker? No. What would that be? That would be uh, the amount of uh, money that we withhold from uh, employees to participate in flexible spending accounts under IRS Section 125. Can you, I'm, I'm confused. We pay them money for our staff to participate in flex spending? So if we, if we, um, if we pay a person $100 and they want $25 withheld, to uh, go into a flexible spending account, uh, we pay them a net $75. But that $25 is actually something that we have to put into another account, and we do it via check, uh, in order to uh, put it in the account so when people file claims, that there's money there to pay those claims. Okay, I, for some reason, I thought that this was being handled by um, 
a company like an Elmhurst, but that may just That's be public the, source. That must just be the filing of the claims, not the money. And so employees send their claims to FlexSource and Elmhurst to adjudicate the claims and uh, you know make sure that they're paid appropriately for from the HRA, from the flexible spending, uh, from the uh, dental HRA. Um, and I think that's it. Those are the okay, three. Those are the three. Okay, well, thank you for that. Um, and then let me go quickly. Um, okay, just have a couple more. Um, Ingram Library Services for twenty-five thousand ninety-two. Are those books? Yes. Mostly. And then um, I can't pronounce this. Um, it's check number 76781. Towards the bottom on page 16, it's in Spanish. Cigarnio. It's for $939.56. It's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So if you look on page uh, 25, mm -hmm. uh, you can see that this. Uh, this vendor and this amount was uh, charged uh, in the general ledger to materials, uh, in particular adult books. So these are Spanish books, is what my uh, what my guess would be. Of course, we do have all of the invoices. Was it both? Uh, both? Uh, we do have all of the uh, invoices in the blue box if you'd like to take a look at. Um, no, thank you. Um, all right, then the next one's library furniture for $8,991. I'm a little confused by that, but what does it represent? That is uh, three different purchases that were made um, out of per capita grant money. And you see on page 25, there was a, a toy table for children's services. There were some spinners for uh, information to be uh, like flyers and things like that to hold them, and there was a third thing, which I do not remember at the moment. The toy table is pretty cool, I saw it. Yeah, good, thank you. It's, it flips over so that one side is Lego and the other side is a train table. And that's, again, per capita grant expenditures. So we're talking mm -hmm. a child's table and three spinners? And there's one more thing. Have you ever been in the toy area of the children's department? Um, yes. They mm -hmm. have the train table. This is bigger than the train table. And when I was there, it was set up for labels. Okay, thanks. And um, this is per capita, and there's there's no requirement for that spending, right? Or, or you have a broader range of what you can use it on? Yes. Okay. So, um, Frank, just as an aside, if any board members have any questions, can they call you before the meeting to ask these? Um, you know, with email is better, okay. you know, because then I could, you know, report everything and, and distribute it to uh, the balance of the board if they're interested in knowing what kind of questions okay. come up. Um, you know, if you pay it out for capita, then you can show a cut in your cost for the uh, reimbursement for, you know, for office supplies, or not office supplies, but furniture. Then. <laughs> There are things that I just wouldn't have bought. But I don't ever put things in the per capita grant application that are necessities because if they, for some reason, did yeah, not no. give it to us or gave right. us a lower amount of money, then we would be in big trouble. Right. Okay, okay my, are we done? my last question is um, the village of Niles, $815.15, is that? Like a water or water bill? Or? Yeah. yeah, if you look at uh, on page 27, oh. it says it's water. All right, that's it. Um, thank you. All right, maybe we'll call. Uh, Karen? Yes. Carolyn? No. Dennis? Sure. Diane. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Linda. Yes. Yes. Okay, our next agenda on the item on the is the director's report. Um, 
Um, Susan, we have your comments, uh, or rather we have the pages that you provided during our packet, excuse me, inside of our packet. Um, do you have um, some information to add or elaborate? Okay. Um, I wanted to show you an example. I said, had said that I thought that they, the marketing department had created a outstanding library card campaign and that this is the piece of um, collateral that they are passing out off-site. So if they go to an uh, event, a school, someplace like that, they're passing this out. It's a trifold. It, um, it has a refrigerator magnet on the inside with the library's address and hours on it in the shape of a library card. And then it just has very clever copy. And then out here, the theme that they picked is best deal ever. It shows that um, all the, the value that you get from your library card and so on the back here, it gives examples of things that you would be paying for that otherwise you just come to the library and check out. So um, I'll pass that around. I just thought it was very, it, it, it looks great. It, I thought that the uh, writing on it was terrific, and I thought you might enjoy seeing that. What's your problem, Diane? I don't have the, the program. The, the card? Mm -hmm. it's, I the whole program for that. The whole Best Deal Ever campaign. Yeah. It's, it's underway. I don't have a bottom line cost because it's going to take. you a bottom line cost you get? I can't at the moment because no, no, it's going to be, but no, it's, it's, a, it's part of the strategic plan, and so okay. it will be going on over the course of months. There will be different pieces of it. So can you give me a, a cost over a, a different folder then? Well, I can try to do that. Sure. I mean, it's. Sure. Starting with the kickoff. And well, you know, but we've got a lot of donated things too. Uh, the, the I don't, I don't care. I don't care if it's donated. donated. I'm just wondering what the cost is. Simple right. question. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, uh, I think uh, related to that would be interesting to know how much that was donated. Uh, yeah. Right. Right. No, they've gotten a lot of good donations. Um, let's see, uh, the auditors have been here this week doing their field work. They just uh, have done most of it, finished it up for the most part today. And then they, you know, as you know, they will be working on the report for the next couple months and they will present to the board uh, in November. And you will get it about a week in advance to review so that you'll be able to ask questions when GD is here. Mm -hmm. Um, the exterior work that has been going on, the caulking part of the project is complete. The painting, they've uh, washed from the building and the painting is, I don't know, about two-thirds done by now? Yeah, they've been walking off particular areas of the parking lot. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the new color, but already gotten some compliments about it. I think it looks good. Um, and then, um, uh, I just wanted to highlight the fact that some of the staff went out to the Trying Vera set of apartments way up at the north end of the district, all the way up mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. It's a very um, dense area up there. It's a lot of, there's the Michael Todd Terrace, and then next door is Trying Vera up on Milwaukee, almost to Aft. Aft used to be part of the library district, actually. Um, and they went out in person, they did a Bollywood dancing program, and they worked with the manager of it, um, to plan the right time and the right sort of program to do. Did library card sign up live there? And we got, I hope everybody saw the really nice letter that we got um, thanking us for having come out. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it was just so nice for somebody to make the effort to write back and say thank you. Um, and then uh, the last thing I just wanted to bring up is to remind you that this is, you know, mid-September. If the board does want to do anything for staff for any of the holidays, you should start thinking about what sort of a thing you might want to do. And that is all I have. Does anyone have any questions for me? Um, from your report, yes, I, I had a couple. Um, the CPR AED training, I was reading that, and I noticed there's like a second phase, which is first aid. Homelessness and mental health. With that, those are separate things. So the first aid we actually had last week. Okay. Uh, somebody from the fire department came out and did some more training. Okay. Um, okay. We also had our first fire drill with patrons in the building this mm -hmm. week. So that was exciting. Oh, yeah. uh, fine. It was just fine. We did it first thing in the morning on Monday morning, and everybody kind of went pouring out of the building, and nobody argued. They, even the auditors had to leave, so that was kind of funny. Yeah. So uh, yeah, the so the AED training and the first aid training that's complete, and that that's all of that. And then the homelessness training, I think, is in November. And there's some kind of mental illness one I think here tomorrow. Yeah. So who's providing the homelessness and the mental training? That's the mental illness training. I don't know how it's doing that. Mental it's, 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 it's yeah. Just the home site for it. 
Yeah, yes. well, that's the one tomorrow. That's tomorrow. Yeah. 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 One is tomorrow. Yeah. 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 Let's do rails. Oh, oh rails. rails. That system. So they just they were looking for a site, and we're the yeah. site for it. And because we were the site, they're giving us five slots. So that's very nice. Mm -hmm. So we have five people getting to do that. And I don't remember who's doing the homelessness training. To be honest. So, so I was work. just curious about um, utilizing Tony at. Um, oh, we had Tony. He's wonderful. So is this in addition to that? Because I yes. thought he said he's already been here. So okay, yes. He has. So is here. this additional training? Yes, it is. It's with a, there's a training expert. Uh, named Ryan and somebody or other, and he does a uh, newsletters where he has he just works a great deal with the homeless, and so this is not just for us. This is for a number of libraries. So you're together. actually a location for other people. To come sure, there. I get it. Okay, Th that one I think might not. I don't even remember if that one is here or not. Okay, and then I just have one other question. I don't where is it? Um, oh, um, it looks like. Um, uh, that's not part of your notes, sorry. Oh, on Friday, August 30th, I noticed we had an outage. We did. Was that, uh, how long was that? Was it all? Two hours. I'm sorry? Two hours. Oh, really? Okay, all right, so was anything damaged or? No. Okay, all right, that's, uh, that's all I have then, thanks. Um, I just wanted to say, I think it's uh, pretty cool that you already have 25 uh, staff Certified in the heart uh, saver. That's pretty cool. Thank you. I have something to say about um, Susie. Congratulations for saving fifty-seven hundred dollars for the library. We're always talking about spending more. Yeah, it's but a way to go. Fifty-seven hundred dollars. Yes. She should be public employee. <laughs> <laughs> Bring that program back. I guess. <laughs> okay. Anything else? Uh, I'd like to um, commend Neil, uh, page 50, uh, 35, for being a, a board member of the National Historical Society. I think he should be employed in one, too. It's nice that the treehouse is 21%. 215%, uh, I'm sorry. Please that they have a yes, yes. So call employee of the month, sorry. And uh, page 36, I'd like to Victoria for being the chair of the Library Arts and uh, Art and Historic That's great. Uh, working with the Miles Art Day. Uh, we're going to have a Fields uh, Artist show here at some point. Yes, they're trying to figure out what, what they want to do. They, they want to have a themed show yeah. so that they have something that they're all working on, not just sort of random things. Yeah. There's quite a few artists in the There really are. And uh, just a question, Warden Grove. Um, were they not part of the consortium? They, no, they were, they were standalone. So they finally decided that it made sense to join a consortium. So, so we are glad about that and they're glad about that. The uh, passport service on page 36, uh, it says year to date. Is that fiscal year to date or is that the, from January? What, is that a calendar year or a fiscal year? We're kind of just when we started taking the applications, uh, which I think is... So year, so year to date. Um, is fiscal year to date, uh, we've done 149 so far. Oh, okay. Since uh, July 1st. Which is still pretty good. Yeah, that yeah. is yeah. good. Yeah. I, I was thinking, Jim. And we've hit uh, 993. We're just short of 1,000. Yeah. yeah, wasn't that started though after the first year? Mm -hmm. uh, it, was, it was started about the middle of December. Oh, okay. Uh, so but, I knew it was know, around like, the holidays, but I thought it was The first few weeks, we, you know, we hardly had anything. Just people mm -hmm. were starting to understand that, you know, what we were doing. Yeah, I think that's going very well for us from the looks of it. Yeah. And on page 37, congratulations to um, Kathleen and Alexa for the poster session. Very nice. Yeah, I guess, uh, oh, and, and Bobby Bailey, page 37, Robin. Uh, working with the local businesses, I think that's just fantastic. That's a great idea. Uh, that's just great. Oh, calling is tough, I feel. Yeah. yeah. But uh, to get Costco and uh, you know, your friends, that's, that's fantastic. And uh, lastly, on page 38, uh, we talked about the 11,000 less electricity. So, kudos for that. Good job. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm on a lot of library sites, so uh, I saw something about a volunteer service. 
Oh, yeah, that, well, that's what they're calling. It's basically reader's advisory, but online. You know, so if people come up to the desk, they might say, I'm looking for something to read. Can you recommend something? This is basically an electronic version of that. that. I don't think they've actually gotten any yet, but she's ready to do it if they ask. So essentially, I would call in and say... Well, you, it's computer, so you would type yeah, in. Type in something. Uh, gee, uh, I really like murder mysteries. Yeah. What kind of book should I... Yeah, and I think the forum would ask you what are the last three books that you read that you liked. It's, you have to get some information from it, the person, and then you can make a guess based on the information that you, you what you know that they already so like. So is it computer generated? Or no, 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 it's a staff, it's a staff yeah. member. That's just it's what she offers in person, and we thought we would try seeing if anybody wanted to do it online. Sure, so makes mm, sense. That sounds cool. Yeah. Okay. okay, thanks. Thank you. Um, what about communications? I just the one I pointed out. Okay. And kitchen suggestions, we see those in the packet. Anything else besides what we have out there already? No. Nope. Okay. Uh, any liaison reports, friends and library? Um, no, but before we go there, did we pass committees on page 40? Uh, pass committees. Yes. The ADD committee, safety and OSHA compliance. What about that? Did we pass that already? I was going to well, ask. Well, that was sort of the part of the report, but. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, I just had a question. Um, I noticed that you have you have a 40-page new employee safety guide, right? Which was proofed by several staff. I was just wondering, is this um, your like uh, what do we call ours? Uh, like emergency? Okay. Yeah. And who created this for you, Cindy? Cindy has been working on it for at least two years, and then she, um, yeah, we, I mean, she based it on our previous one, and obviously we've always had something, and so she has just been expanding it, and then she's worked with uh, Dave and went out and got some, they got some training about, I don't know, what is this OSHA compliance <laughs> things, and so we've been adding more of that, like making sure that we have the safety sheets that go with every chemical or thing oh, that we have. It's okay. She's trying to get everything compliant and, uh, and better, and right. so the fire drill was run by that committee as well. And All right, so I think yeah. I'm thinking I'm thinking of like um, there's an active shooter, terrorist attack. Mm -hmm. That's not yeah. what this is. No, well it is that as well, but um, okay, but that it's really it's added more. Yeah. yeah. Who did you get that information the, from? The active shooter. We had a presentation at the last staff day. Somebody from so the police department okay. that came and did a, a very you know like a hour long presentation. So you've not been working with one. someone to get yeah. the the the, set, the array, what you need to know yes. in those situations. Okay, yeah. I was just curious who that was because it said it was proof by several oh, staff. That's proof reading. She that just was the way saying, okay. you know, there were typos and things like that. So just okay. I'll be honest our, ours was through Homeland Security, but again I, that may have cost an arm and a leg. Mm -hmm. So I just was wondering that there was some type of police department or, or some body um, that was helping you. Okay, that that's all. Thank well, you. We have consulted with we could have uh, sergeant or what is he now? Oh, yeah, he's Yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. 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 Okay, that's fine. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. Anything in terms of ways and reports from the library of the library? No. Carolyn, have the friends met because I'm not on no. the mailing list anymore. Four. It's the fourth Thursday. That new arrangement is the fourth Thursday of the month. Okay. I I think he actually booked the rooms here at the library for the third Thursday of the month, so um, real we have to get those canceled, I guess. I just am wondering if the Friends is going to want to uh, help contribute to the coming together in Skokie and Niles Township Polish celebration, because so many of them are Polish, and I thought they might want to, um, you know, sponsor a Did program or something like that. Did you want to send them an email, and then when we meet, I could bring I, it up? But okay. I was just thinking, I'm not meeting tomorrow. Okay. All right, I'll have to look into that. Thank you. Okay, um, we do have a secretary's report this month. Jane, would you like to read it into the record? A certified copy of the report of receipts and expenditures from the Niles Main District Library for the six months ending June 30, 2018, was filed with the Cook County Clerk on August 16, 2018. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, new business. 
Uh, do I have a motion to approve payment uh, to Visographic in the amount of $5,669.90? <coughs> and this is the payment for our fall chapter one newsletter. Um, do I have a motion? Okay. Did I hear a second? Second. Second. Okay, fine. All right. Um, any uh, discussion regarding this item? Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. um, it's for the um, publication. What, 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 just what is it for the publication? Is it printing? Is it... Um, Sasha actually is giving a presentation in a few minutes and he has all of that spelled out. So it will be one what of the slides. What does $5,000 his... include? Yes. Yeah. So he, he actually okay. has a slide for that. So okay. we'll just hold off and talk. That's fine. Any other questions? All right, uh, Diane, would you please take the roll? Here. Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Diane? Yes. Candy? Yes. And, uh, yes. Jenny. Yes. Okay, the next item is to approve the closing of the library for the annual staff in service day on Friday, January 18th, 2019. Uh, do I have such a motion to uh, take that action? Motion. Second. Okay. And there's a little discussion uh, in our packet as to uh, why this is done, why we do it on an annual basis. Uh, I think we're all we're usually very careful to notify the staff, not just the staff, but the public right. ahead of time that we're going to be closing that day. Mm -hmm. It is a school day, and uh, so, but you would get some kids there after school. Right, right. So, you know, so school we'll let them know. Yeah. Okay, because we don't want people coming here. Yeah. All right. Uh, do I have a motion? Did I get a motion? Mm -hmm. Yes, you I'm did. Sorry. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, any discussion on this? I have a question. Yes. I understand it's, um, I don't have my notes, diversity, equity, and diversity training. Yeah. So, what did you decide you were going to do? Uh, I don't have the speaker booked yet. I just know that that's the topic we want to cover based on the strategic plan. We did not do that last year. We wanted to do it last year, and we weren't able to get the speakers that we wanted. We had tried Corey Wallace, and we had tried somebody else, and we weren't able to get them, so we're trying that again this year. So, oh, be so because I thought you mentioned you were thinking of some sort of module, $5,000 for some computer module training? Yeah, I have not done that to date. Okay, so are you considering having a speaker come in again? Is that yes. what you're thinking? Yeah. Okay. Would you consider Corey since she's already uh, going I, to I tried to get Corey last year. She's just extremely hard to get. She's very, very busy. She, it's she actually hard to get me her. asking me when, and then she left the country. Yeah. yeah. She's okay, very, so. I would love to have Corey. But okay. she, is, she is a very busy lady. But your date's in here, right? So I will I'll shoot January her an email 20. and say, contact you and let you know if she is or isn't available, and then you can. Okay. Do what you want. That'd be great. What I like about her is she'll come back numerous mm -hmm. times. Yes, that would be wonderful. And now it's a one shot. You shot get enough. everybody at any time. Yeah. So, all right, sounds good. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, okay, do we do a roll call? Yeah. No. Okay. So um, they have a roll call. Karen. Yes. Carolyn. Yes. Dennis. Yes. Diane. Yes. Patty. Yes. Linda. Yes. Tim. Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, so anyway, I just want to preface the next item uh, by saying the next item under new business. That I was looking at, uh, I think it was chapter one, and I, I looked and I saw my, one of my favorite authors was coming here yeah. to the Niles Public Library to speak, Scott Rose. So I looked at that, and then I looked at the date, and I thought, oh no, it's the exact same time as our board meeting. So I called up Susan, I said, this happened and she said well you could change the time or something like that so she said she put it on the agenda since then I've, I've started thinking well maybe we should really change the time I mean just because I really love this author <laughs> and I started feeling bad about uh, sort of sheepish about that so anyway it's on the agenda and I don't know if anyone has any other thoughts but you know while I would really like to hear Scott Tironi, it's going to be very painful if he's in another part of the library and I can't hear him but generally thinking I definitely think it's sort of a bad idea to change the meeting time for, you know. Yeah, unless, I don't know if he'll allow that. I mean, you know, sometimes speakers don't want to be taped or, yeah. Unless we could possibly say, we are only meeting to such and such a time, so we're not running after 10. 
No. Well, I mean, he's speaking at seven. He's, yeah. he's speaking at seven. Uh, so realistically, the meeting would start, like it said, at eight, is what you're suggesting. Uh, there's a whole hour. That's one thought I had. But then I, I thought, well, you know, I don't, I don't really think it's a good idea to change. Couldn't we just change the date? Someone wants to be that? someplace else. Hmm? Couldn't we just change the date? Versus uh, changing the time? It, well, that, that's a possibility. It's I don't know. It's a little late in the game to do that. <coughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, well, anyway, it's not even a motion on the floor yet. Does anyone want to make Okay, I'll motion. Okay. Any seconds? Second. Okay. So we can have some discussion. Does anyone else have any thoughts about this? In, in terms of either this event or in terms of just when, if we should ever postpone a meeting or change a meeting time. You know what? Yeah. This is our board. I, yeah, I know. You know I know. If there's something going on that is uh, important to us and we agree to it, I think that it's, it's not necessarily that bad of a thing. But I would suggest changing the thing. Um, changing the date is a possibility, but then we have to find a date when everyone could make it. Because we all have put this date on our calendar many months ago. And if someone, you know, couldn't make this, uh, you know, a regular meeting date, well then, you know, that's, that's too bad. But um, I don't know if we can find another date. The, the problem is I don't have to give the guarantee for room. Oh. Mm -hmm. yeah. I do have one question. Um, this author, is this the only day out of the whole year he was available on a board meeting day? I just don't think that's what the person that was booking him was thinking about when she was yeah. booking him. I think she was just thinking, yeah, he's got her out. And then yeah. and he gave us a great price. And, mm -hmm. and she got him through connections that she has at the Society for Midland Authors. So she was thinking about it. Well, maybe wasn't. we should find out if he's going to yeah. be someplace else. Many times they travel to That's the true. Nice. Yeah, yeah, no, he's, he's, not on a, he's not on a tour right now. He just yeah. is doing this as a special favor to oh. her husband, who's the president of the Society of Midland Authors. Mm -hmm. So it, it's. Well, we do have a vice president. <laughs> we can come in. Come and yeah. Uh, well, all right. We'll see how it goes. We'll, we'll as long as there's a quorum. That's right. That's right. Um, okay. Well. I, I will. Well, I don't know if I can withdraw that since uh, um, that's already the, on the table now. Should she take uh, back her mo her motion? Mm -hmm. Well, it depends. I mean, not to vote. I mean. An hour. If it's a short, if it's a, if it's a small agenda. Do we really have agenda, that much to discuss next month? <coughs> then we might be. I don't know. Yes. Yes. I, don't know don't know. I don't know what to come up. I don't know what people want to say. I can't predict that. Um, I, I don't know. Do the movement and second group want to withdraw their motion? Or we could just vote. What are we voting for? To uh, change the time? To change it from 7 to 8 p.m. Do we present, uh, so we have the board meeting, <coughs> it's open to the public too, right? Yeah. yeah. So therefore, you know, when we get a clock, changes are available. It could inconvenience well. some members of the public who wanted to come. That's that's true, and that's a reason not to do it, of course. And so. is he commissioned only for an hour, or is this yes. a group of people that stand up and leave on his table? Well, thank you. Well, okay. Um, uh, I'm just, yeah, you don't need to know this, but I, I'm probably just going to vote no just because I now feel bad about having even, <laughs> even brought this up. So I'll go ahead and call the roll. Unless okay. anyone else has any other comments. Okay, now. Yeah. I'm going to have to vote no. I, I don't think it's a good enough reason to Dennis. change the board meeting. Diane. No. Sorry. Yeah, you well, since the original person said no, I guess I'll <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Linda. 
I'll go with the no then. I was willing to go the yes. I said yes. <laughs> I know. I was half tempted to go. I'll go too. Yeah, but you know, you don't want to go now because you feel guilty. Well, it's such as life. Well, we only need a quorum. So that helps you feel not as guilty. Right. Well, uh, we'll see. We'll see. So anyway, we now have another agenda item about moving the uh, board meeting, but it's a little bit uh, further away and uh, would give any member of the public adequate opportunity to know when the meeting's going to be. Um, so let's see if I turn to this. Uh, do I hear a motion to approve moving the regular meeting of the board of the trustees motion. from May 15th, 2019 to May 22nd? 2019, and there's an explanation on page 53 as to why we're doing this. Uh, we do have a motion. Do we have a seconder? Second. 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 Okay. Um, Susan, do you want to give a short explanation? Yeah. Here, but the way it works is there is a trustee election in April. The uh, new board will be seated. Uh, new board members can be sworn in on the third Monday of the month. But this board meeting is the earliest it can ever be, uh, being May 15th. So it comes before that third Monday of the month. So normally at that meeting you would swear in the new members and, and they call it basically you have a new board at that time. And so that new board elects its officers. Um, and so to me it makes a lot more sense to hold off one week and swear in your new board members rather than waiting well, the new board members would have every right to be sworn and then following that May 15th meeting, but then you wouldn't have your new board seated yet with your pre new president and vice president and everything. So that doesn't make sense to me. I would hold it the meeting the following week it, because that's also, that's like one day later than the latest board meeting can be. So it's not extraordinarily out of the window. It's just a funny month. So I, I would probably recommend that the board do this. Does anybody have any questions or thoughts about this? I, I agree with her. I thought it was extremely odd last year that um, Trustee Olson and um, Martin were like sitting there and they were elected and we were having a meeting and they couldn't participate. So I think that's a good idea. Okay. All right. Um, Karen. Yes. Carolyn. Yes. Dennis. Yes. Diane. Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, do we have a motion to approve the expenditure, not to exceed, not to exceed twenty-three thousand nine hundred fifty-two dollars and eleven cents, from the special reserve fund mm -hmm. to purchase security cameras and video management licenses from CDWG? Is such a motion? Motion. Second. Second. Yeah, she seconded. Okay. Um, so, um, Greg, this is, uh, there's a lot of material here, uh, all the different things that we've received. Can you uh, go through this with us? Yes, absolutely. I have a presentation. I think I've seen a copy of mine. All right. Everybody. Thank you. I'll wait for this one. Yeah. Okay. So in the last uh, budget process, um, we approved uh, uh, we approved uh, the board approved uh, two two projects, and uh, the first project was a door access control system uh, update. Basically, we have an old style um, uh, physical key that goes into a physical lock, um, and, and that has its limitations. Um, you know, we do have some master keys, and we do have some sub master keys. But you know, very often uh, somebody wants to get into a room, which they're completely entitled to do to uh, conduct their business, uh, but we're scrambling for a key. Who has a key? Is a key holder on site, etc., etc., etc. And um, uh, so, what we're trying to do with the door access control system is improve the access to all of the interior spaces. Uh, reduce the effort to uh, track and recover the traditional keys, as you might imagine, once a key leaves the building and the employee's pocket, once they're an ex-employee, it compromises uh, locks. So we've had to have the locks, uh, the lock cylinders re recorded and replaced, and, 
and uh, get new keys for everybody, and, and uh, that starts to run into uh, some money. Uh, it would also reduce uh, operating costs because uh, we wouldn't have to uh, uh, do those types of pro uh, processes anymore and improve patron service levels. Nothing worse than patrons saying, can I get into this room or can I have this thing and having to chase down somebody with a key while they wait. Um, so the, uh, the vision is to have electronic uh, key sets or lock sets. Uh, which are activated by key fobs. It might be a card, it might be an actual fob, you know, like you use for your car, but not as many buttons. And uh, we'd be able to customize access, you know, for people through uh, a computer interface. Second project is a security camera replacement project. We have a number of aging analog cameras. You can see them as you walk through the library from, uh, from point to point. Um, and what, you know, what we're finding now that you know, most of the cameras are 10 years old is that they're dying. They're dying of old age. Um, and uh, not only that, but as we, look at, as we look at security cameras in the modern age, we find that we're not as covered as we ought to be. Um, we have a, a very small amount of cameras, uh, if any at all, really, in uh, kids' space, for example. And if you read the press, you know, it's always full of, you know, the danger that kids are in uh, and so forth. Uh, we find from time to time that some of our assets start to disappear. You know, we, you know, uh, I think it's over a year, but maybe 18 months, uh, we had uh, some recurrent thefts of video games and DVDs. And, uh, you know, our solution at the time was to take an old camera and just you know, plop it against the wall. Uh, in addition to changing the format and the way that we handle those things, and you know, the uh, you know the uh, thefts went away. Uh, we also want to know who's in the building or who's leaving the building. Uh, again, in the case of kids, you know, if we're looking for a child in the building, we want to make sure that every single asset or uh, exit is covered so that we can identify uh, any of those things. And of course, monitor closed meeting rooms where, you know, if, uh, you know, somebody is able to get into a room like this, for example, um, make sure that, you know, uh, nothing bad is happening. Um, so, uh, part of the project is that we would standardize on a camera vendor and we go to a completely digital uh, solution. The timing, the security camera replacement project uh, is basically the us. Um, which is why we're, we're talking about uh, security overall and looking specifically at this presentation which deals uh, with the uh, camera replacement. So fall of 2018, we plan to purchase and install and configure um, all of the components. Door access control system uh, project is something that we envision for the spring. Uh, what we had in this year's uh, budget, we estimated $60,000 for both projects. Mm -hmm. Which was a semi-educated guess based on you know looking at some components here and there. Um, so it may be a little bit higher, maybe a little bit lower. Just, yeah, we only have one piece of it. That's so uh, a little bit more detail about the uh, camera replacement product uh, project. Uh, replacement cameras uh, are being provided by a maker called Access Communications. They're a market leader uh, in network video. Simple installation and setup, single low voltage cable uh, for carrying both data uh, and power. Um, if you remember when we, uh, when the board approved uh, purchases of uh, switching gear, new switching gear, um, we made sure that we bought power over Ethernet uh, switches uh, just for this eventuality, as well as to support replacement of the uh, telephone system later on this year. Um, uh, the uh, cameras have day and night capabilities um, cool. as needed. So, you know, when uh, the lights are off in the garage, for example, uh, we'd be able to see if anybody was able to gain access to the garage and, you know, steal a van or monkey around with uh, anything that's in there. Um, we're planning on purchasing 35 cameras. Um, we have 
uh, I can't remember, four cameras? Uh, uh, five that we're using. Okay, we have five cameras um, of, this, of this type right now. Um, many we bought in order to you know, move around the library and take photographs so that we could see what kind of coverage we could get and, mm -hmm. and so forth. I mean, you know, I have a presentation, actually Rich put a presentation uh, together as well as much of the information here. Um, yes, you know, what do you, would you take about, well, you probably took 40 different uh, shots. And I, I won't bore you with all of those. Uh, on the back end, um, we have to expand the video management system. Um, choosing uh, Milestone X Protect Pro, it's an open platform design. Uh, desk and mobile client access can allow law enforcement access. We're looking at uh, buying 31 licenses um, and uh, technical support and startup uh, support. This is just a quick look at you know what some of the cameras uh, look like. So you know we try to make them as as hidden as possible, but you know we have some uh, applications where 360 degree view is required where basically you have uh, 180 degrees one way and 180 degrees to, uh, to the other. We have uh, night vision cameras as you see, some directional cameras as well as a fisheye which will give you, um, which will give you uh, 160, no 150 uh, degrees of uh, visibility. So you know different cameras for different applications. Uh, this is just a quick shot. Um, of uh, what an old camera is doing here on the uh, on the left. This is from the uh, analog uh, camera. You can see it's even at this uh, size. It's kind of grainy. Um, so on this side here, the resolution is is, uh, is much sharper. And uh, if we need to zoom in uh, on a skill or something like that, we you know we'd be in much better shape to do so with that uh, piece of equipment. Um, this is a map which identifies the placement. So uh, to orient um, you, this is uh, basically the first floor up in, uh, up in this area. Here's the front door under the portico. This is the lobby, for example. Uh, it's important to note, I think, that this is kid space right here where you see just a number of cameras. The blue circles represent 360 uh, degree cameras. Um, these, uh, these pie slices uh, here, uh, they look like they're 150 degrees, um, uh, or maybe this is 150, this looks like it's, it's lesser. Um, this area right here is the, is the tech floor where we have all of our computers, and then we have the teen underground here. So, you know, we want to make sure that we're able to see, uh, you know, all of the spaces and, and so forth. We didn't put any in the study rooms because the study rooms all have um, uh, big glass windows, you know, so it's kind of hard to hide in there, and they're relatively uh, small rooms. But we did, um, in this area, for example, for kids space, um, uh, this is a, a, a study room for kids. We did put one in here um, because uh, we're just, I think it's, it's uh, better, uh, uh, it's more cautious to have something there instead of uh, waiting for something to happen. Um, this is our large meeting room here. So, you know, we do have kids programs in the large meeting room. So, uh, you know, if you put one into uh, one camera in each corner, because the room is divisible uh, by an air model, you know, you can see basically the entire, uh, the entire room, no matter what the configuration is. Um, this camera, for example, looks at the, the back door outside of technical services on the back side of the library. Um, and, uh, and then we have, uh, it's kind of light here, let me look at that. Yeah, this is the, this is, oh, this is the back hallway right here, uh, which goes past uh, Dave's office. So, you know, uh, this area is the cafe, and then here's the double doors that go into the back part of the library. So, you know, we have one in the garage, one of each entrance to make sure that we're looking at folks who are coming and going. 
This is a, a sample photograph of uh, camera one. Um, just to orient you, this is where camera one's placement is right here. So um, you can see, we'd be able to see uh, basically a 180 degree view here going from the you know, front desk all the way around to kid space, getting uh, uh, another lens focused on the uh, circulation desk and yet another lens focused on the, on the front door. Uh, so the cameras are pretty versatile and I, you know, I think you have to agree that the shots are uh, pretty good. Uh, this is the second and the third floor um, to uh, again to orient ourselves. I'm looking, uh, uh, this is the boardroom right here. This is where we are so we would have one high in the corner over the door, um, basically a recording activity in the, uh, in the boardroom. Uh, we felt that was necessary because it was so big, so big. And of course, you know, we have a number of uh, cameras in, in this uh, general area outside of the boardroom to capture the stacks here and capture uh, this part of uh, the library. We have a camera here looking at the uh, entrance to the uh, restrooms to make sure that you know we don't have uh, uh, we don't have folks habitually taking materials into the restroom to you know strip them of their security and then walk out with them uh, which is kind of a thing um, and then we have in place uh, we have cameras placed uh, throughout this area uh, and right here is our uh, uh, is the is the administrative offices and uh, uh, because it's behind a locked door, uh, you know, we don't have any, any security cameras in, in this area. Uh, you don't think you should have any? Well, we're focused on protecting the public, uh, primarily. And, uh, you know, the public is uh, rarely, if ever, in the, uh, in, in the administrative offices. And all of the administrative offices doors have uh, windows on them so that, you know, anybody uh, can look in and make sure that everything's okay, yes, or yes, and that. But if there was a, a threat, that whole, your whole <coughs> area is a blind spot. No police or any um, outside um, specialist could could help you or know what's going on. I mean, we're going to redo this whole library. Why would we want a blank spot? Well, we'll take it under advisement. But, you know, as I said, you know, the, the, you know uh, we are more concerned with protecting, uh, you know, patrons and especially the children. Uh, before, before you, yeah, I appreciate it. Before you move on, she was is talking that, about me. Then. Is that, is that, just real quick, is that a blank area too? There isn't. I don't see any. Uh, be more specific. See to the right, like it looks like the first, like almost. The, Here? Yeah, there's like. That's roof. Oh, okay. okay. And below it is. Higher uh, roof. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm like, all right. Thank yeah. you. So this is, you know, this is the garage. Uh, you know, uh, this area is uh, maintenance and technical services. Primarily. You know, if I was an employee, I don't know if I'd want to have a camera looking at me all day long. There's some privacy. I'd be too busy by this for it. So here's uh, an example um, on the uh, second and uh, third floor uh, to orient you. It's this camera right here. You know, the interesting thing is, even though these these are drawn with pretty tight radii, mm -hmm. um, you can see you can see, you know place there. You can see all the way to the windows through the stacks. You can see the door of the uh, board room. Uh, looking the other way, you, you know you have. Uh, you pass the restrooms, uh, you know, and here are the, here are the foreign language uh, stacks, you know, so, you know, and here's the uh, uh, administrative door. So, you know, you do have some uh, pretty good vision. So what's the ease of the access of uh, accessing something, say, oh, something happens, somebody walks out the door with a kid, is, can, do you have ease of access to go back and see something right away? Is there a certain Yeah, uh, right time? now we have, uh, 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 seven days uh, storage capacity is what we're nice. calculated. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll tell you, we're having a code we haven't called a couple of times. Yeah. Uh, I think that having the kid areas is good. Yeah, uh, well, and, 
uh, on the earlier slide, you know, law enforcement, if they choose, can access and, and monitor if, uh, if they desire. Is that it's one of the licenses or whatever? Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. 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 it's embedded with the license. Yeah. Right. Speaking of licenses, since we've got them up, are those licenses users or cameras? Cameras. Yeah. Okay. So here's a summary. Um, Rich um, went out and secured uh, four bids. Uh, we actually had a fifth bidder. Uh, who cold called us, dying to get into the library, dying to show us what they can do, dying to provide us with all this uh, great information and so forth. So Rich says, okay, I need 35 cameras and 31 licenses, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we never heard from them again. Why, why 31 licenses and 35 cameras if it's a license for cameras? Uh, we have, uh, we, we, have, have some we have some licenses, okay. uh, or we have some cameras already, we okay. have some licenses and, already. And, and. Um, the list price? Um, for all these uh, pieces and parts and licenses is $30,283. The, um, the bids we got range from just under $24,000 to like $26,500. Um, the uh, the uh, $24,000 bid right here is uh, through CWG, and that represents a 21% 21 discount, uh, 21 discount off of the list price here, or savings off a list of about $6,300. Uh, um, there's no installation uh, on any of this because the installation would be taken care of by internal staff. Uh, most of uh, most of the drops are already in place. Uh, would be before. I believe so. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> so, um, you so know, there's no other electrical issues. Well, it's you know PoE, so. Uh, power over Ethernet, so the switch will be supplied. You know, kind of like you know the old style telephones. You know, the old light, uh, landlines. Sure. You know, your power goes out, but you can still get a pizza. Yeah, I love this. Is there any differences in say, um, you know, what these companies discuss with other people who use them? Yeah. So, uh, I mean, so. You mean the right. four vendors? Recommendations. Yeah. Um, you know the the ones that we've dealt with the most and that we've had excellent experience with are CWG and VNH Photo. Mm -hmm. uh, we've gotten uh, a lot of equipment uh, from them over the years. Mm -hmm. We've worked actually with every single one of them, mm -hmm. and they're you know top of the line vendors. Uh, okay. They are partners with. Access, their partners for access cameras as well as Milestone. Um, so it's not going from a third party or a reseller. They go straight to the distributor for these particular parts. So we went direct to them to get the best price. So that's why the discounts? Yes. yes. Okay. And we did a little bit of beating up like one against the other. So. Which is cool. Yeah, <laughs> it works to our favor. So I think that's it. Uh, yep, that's it. Um, you actually, yeah, I'm sorry, could you go back? I, I, I do have a couple of questions. Yeah. Um, could you go to the children's uh, floor? Um, children's floor? Yeah. Um, does number two there, this one? Yeah. Uh, yeah, does that cover all the stacks? It looks like maybe some of the stacks might still. Yeah, well, um, you know, we will be able to see directly into the, into these areas here, less into that area because of its, uh, uh, you know, because it's more on an angle, it's skewed toward, you know, the camera uh, position. Um, on uh, this side, this is where the uh, DVDs and yeah, so forth are, but we have a camera I guess here. I was kind of concerned about that. It's a couple of stacks right under Axis uh, and 3058. Yeah, uh, just to orient you, um, this semicircular uh, <coughs> thing here is yeah. the desk. Right. Um, this area right here is is the uh, uh, middle ground uh, where the you know teamers hang out. Mm -hmm. um, and this door is, is the door to um, the uh, youth services worker. So you know. Um, we felt that this end needed a camera, 
okay? Because it's, it's the furthest point from the desk and, the, and from, the, uh, from the doorway. But, you know, these other areas right here, this is a pretty high traffic area. Yeah, especially at 362. I mean, so yeah. 360, and you're probably extending out yeah. further than yeah, that. Because yeah. those these, little boxes are the computers. And right. that's, yeah, that's yeah, a these, very these high are traffic the, these area. These are the computers right here. So this is a low table. and. Yeah. You know, so the high shelves, you know, really start here. Uh, these are, uh, I think they're paperback spinners or something like that. Yeah. The little kids' computers, though, I don't see any cameras in that area. Uh, the little kids' computers, you mean exactly. over here? Yeah. Yeah. Right here. <coughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so, um, you know, it's right across from the desk. Yeah. You know, so we, have, bit, you know, yeah. so we have eyes on all the time. Uh, you will get from uh, this camera, you will be able to see you know, so some of the activity, uh, but you know, obviously not as clear as if we... Do you think 11, because of the angle, would cover some of it, or not that far? Uh, 11. Yeah, the no, I, I, well, I don't, I don't, I think you'll be able to see some of it, but not as I, far. I you know. But, you know, again, we, you know, this desk is usually staffed with two to three mm -hmm. people. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a public event. It's also a very open area. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, and it's, you it's have to make the public aware of the fact that they're on video, or I don't know if that's just a stipulation or not. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. No. If we were recording the audio, we would have to have a sign within the right. shot of recording the okay. device, um, uh, which at one point we in the front, and there was a sign that that camera died and we replaced it, but are not audio. Um, and I, I just wondered. The idea behind this is that we wanted to expand what we currently have, and we have about nine cameras. Yeah. Um, but we didn't want to become a situation where we're spending what a Jewel Osco does, where there's two, three cameras in each aisle, which is they're looking at, and there's a person sitting there and trying to figure out who's taking the sugar. Um, <laughs> and, and stealing yeah. their, their inventory. We wanted to have an overall security presence yeah. and be able to identify um, if there was an unfortunate incident, but by this overall presence, you know, over the years we found wherever we've put cameras, there has been a trip of deterrence. Not all the, always to 100%, um, that's why the cameras are there. Yeah. I, I just thought maybe it might be an extra deterrent if they saw the door on camera. Yeah. Some people might not be known. I know where four is, even though it's an open area, where the desk is, it's hard to see because yeah. of the stack. So yeah. that's a good position there for that yeah. one. Did you uh, have any thoughts about parking lot, putting any on the outside of the building? To... Um, you know, uh, we did discuss that. Um, At least the outside entrance. The reluctance. Uh, that we have to doing that is becoming, you know, the go-to for every traffic uh, accident on Polestar and Milwaukee. Uh, uh, you got your bumper straight. Yeah. 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 I just, I, I, there's every once in a while there's people who are arguing outside the parking lot. Yeah. <clears throat> you got to hold your temper too. <laughs> I didn't want to point it. And although this project is before you tonight, it is an expandable system, so we're not yeah. locking ourselves into oh, something. Yeah. If we find the need, never do sure. Uh, sure, sure. Uh, and you know, um, Which more is just as important, if we need to move something, sure, we can move it. Um, yeah. So some of the things are a little bit more permanent, like drilling into the ceiling in the lobby. You know, those ceiling tiles are, sure. you know, uh, once you're in, you're in. You don't want to leave an empty hole. But you know, virtually everywhere else, we're talking about. You know the ceiling tiles, sure. or just drywall. Uh, you know, in order to uh, to make it all work. So, if there's a power outage, like we had recently, how does that affect those security cameras? So, they will be powered for a limited amount of time. Oh, we have like the networks are not on the emergency generator. Uh -huh. um, so, it is going to be a, a short amount of time um, because the system is powered by the switches. We have the data closets that have smaller battery. Uh, UPS units, um, they will typically, at this particular time, probably about 30 minutes of uh, usable power for those devices. Um, and at some point we can look at either upgrading that or perhaps uh, looking at the generator capacity in that. Um, you, know, you have to kind of balance yeah, the cost. Of so, so, so if we were a high security facility sure. or a bank and, or a prison, uh, 
for example, then we would be all generated on everything. So. Yeah, what's the power of those that would be clear at the moment? Oh, well. Uh, hopefully yeah. by then you could evacuate most of the That's people. True. That's true. Um, is there, the licenses, is, is there a yearly license? They're good for five years, oh, and then there's a renewal, and you can choose. We chose the longest term so that we got the best return for the investment. Okay, very nice. Um, very, very nice. I just had one question if you're done. Uh, <coughs> yeah, so I, so I, got, I got the thing. Just one question on the door locks. Um, it's all the, all the door, exterior, interior and exterior doors. Does it include any of the, the equipment cabinets? Uh, well, we were talking. We were we were talking about doing the doors, but not the cabinets. So, so these are physical doors in and out of the Yeah, I understand. And we, so we're and not we doing were, that now, anyway. Right? Yeah. Right. So it's in the spring. Right. The locks, right? right. You, you right. It and we may be going to hear more about that. Yeah, um, uh, we've just started the research on that. Um, okay. You know, part one is to go through and count the doors, <laughs> okay. so we know, sure. you know, uh, you know, what the scope of work looks like. Um, and um, then we can start looking at the parent systems. But uh, just you know, a fine point on a fine point on this. We weren't planning on exterior doors. Oh, um, just interior doors. Okay. This wasn't going to be a stage project where you do certain areas, and or is that going to be figuring out? You but the, everything will happen for the this, doors. Oh, for the doors. Um, we haven't, uh, I, I just don't have the answers to it. Okay, you haven't really yeah. invested in it. I mean, yeah, right I, I right. asked Greg to talk about this a little bit tonight just because I didn't want you to have one big security thing and then four sure. months later go, oh, and by the way, there's a whole other $30,000 security thing. I thought you'd like to know it's a whole thing. Okay. But we don't have the details on that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So back to the cameras, is there a central location where somebody Everything going in? Uh, well, it's accessible by uh, any desktop you put the software on. Hmm. But I'm going to get about 10 or 15 monitors for my office. <laughs> yeah, for my office. The one on of my office would be as big as a screen. Can you do it by an app? Uh, I think you can. I think you can do it by an app. Tell me that. Yeah. I'm looking with Caroline, Caroline. Yeah, about the administrative area having nothing. I mean, even the schools that have instituted this have things in the administrative area. Yeah. Well, you know, as, um, as Rich said, you know, uh, this is expandable. And, um, uh, you know, if after we, uh, uh, we do this project, you know, if we need to expand it, we can certainly can. You know, the hallway is covered on that one for the office, so you're actually covering that door. From somebody going down, oh, mm -hmm. you have that camera there on the ground floor. No, on this the picture there. that you had. The picture you had up there was the entrance. Oh yeah, you yeah. wanted to yeah. cover yeah. the right. entrance, but there's nothing the behind area that. and no. the exit down the uh, stairwell. Yes. Yeah. So. Okay, I just have one question sure. about the reused cameras. They're just going to work with the new system. They're the they same. are these cameras. Oh, okay. So, uh, once again, in order to, uh, you know, take photographs like you see here, um, we actually acquired some of the cameras. And, um, you, know, you see this, you know, you see this ladder here? Um, you know, that's so Rich can get up and, you know, put the camera up temporarily and snap a few photographs. Okay. Oh, I didn't know that. All right, great. Okay. I thought it was part of the art project. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I use like an anti gravity belt and just get up there. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I've been giving away this. Okay, so thanks for the, the very thorough discussion of that. And so we do have the motion in front of us right now. I think it was already the motion to be seconded, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And uh, so we've got the summary, we see the bids all lined up in 54, and this motion is to approve the expenditure. That is the amount listed. Um, so, motion is to approve it. Um, they have a roll call. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Yes. Okay. 
All right. Um, I understand we now have a presentation uh, from uh, Sasha on the library staff recommendations for Chapter 1. Um, so uh, I'm just going to ask everyone to hold their questions to the end um, so we can get through the presentation itself, and then we'll have an opportunity to um, each ask some questions. So uh, please, go ahead. Hello, everyone. Hi, um, hopefully everyone still has energy from the lights being dimmed. Yeah, that's tough. Sorry, everyone. I'm going to move over here just so I can see the slides so I can talk to okay. you. And view. So, um, as Karen mentioned, this is a presentation on Chapter 1. And um, tonight's agenda about Chapter 1 is I'm going to go over the current state of the newsletter. We're going to talk about uh, mailing the newsletter. Uh, some surveying and usability testing that we've done with patrons on their thoughts of the newsletter and what they would like to see in the future. Um, I have some uh, newsletters of some local institutions just so everyone can see you know, where we are compared to some of the local institutions, also a couple libraries. Um, and finally, uh, our recommendation for the future. So the current state of the Chapter 1 newsletter. So first and foremost, as Susan mentioned earlier, um, part of the strategic plan is to evaluate the scope and intent of Chapter 1, whether it's worth um, the money, whether the patrons are actually reading it, um, using it, and you know coming to events and taking advantage of services and so forth as a result of it. Currently, uh, the newsletter is 16 pages, and it comes up four times a year. Uh, its main output is uh, the print version that goes um, to every home in the district. There is also a link on our website with uh, the online version of it that patrons can flip through. And we also send it um, quarterly uh, via e-newsletter for patrons that actually want to get it in, the, in their email. Um, and that's basically the same thing that we're linking to the website. Why does Chapter 1 exist? So Chapter 1 exists because it is filled with uh, all the programs that the library offers for all the different uh, age groups, uh, any special events that are going on at the library, library news, the promotion of our online resources, services, and our collection. Um, I uh, wanted to show this graph to everybody that, um, and uh, that for the past three years, this is the graph of the past three years of the printing costs of the newsletter, and they have gone down since the spring of 2015. We were paying 6,400, and from 6,400 to 5,900, uh, the reason for the drop is uh, we currently use a much more inexpensive third party to upload our uh, a PDF of our Chapter 1 newsletter so that it is available for online. That used to be something that was provided for the printer for an additional cost. We also did look at the paper type that we were using and um, we were able to kind of stay in a similar family uh, of paper so it wouldn't be a dramatic difference for patrons if they were used to a certain uh, kind of publication coming uh, in their mailbox. Um, what we find here, which is the most uh, recent dip is our uh, printer looked into the quantity of prints that we that we received and based off of like the route lists and so forth um, they advised us that they would not uh, the print quantity uh, down a thousand so this has been effective since the summer issue and this current issue that it has gone down um, from spring of 2015 to where we are today um, it's an annual savings of $2,800 um, just by making um, some of those uh, easy changes that didn't affect overall um, what we're trying to accomplish with the new How much the savings is it? Um, $2,800. From 64 to 57. So that's times four, that savings times four, oh, okay. mm -hmm. because it's four quarters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, this is a cost breakdown that was provided from our printer. I have an asterisk there because it's not the most current. Um, it was something that I found uh, in my email preparing for this presentation. So the breakdown is the paper, the pre-press, and creating the plates that actually that's you know, where your newsletter is kind of laid out on. 
the press time, the folding, cutting, stitching, and the preparation for mailing. So not necessarily the mailing itself, but the preparation for um, carrier route and the additional mailings that we have. So, you know, this is based off of what we were paying for a two-year period, spring 2016, spring 2018. So this is, because we are paying less now, this is going to be less as well, but I just want to kind of just show you what goes into the printing uh, cost-wise. Mailing of the newsletter. So there are two ways that we mail the newsletter. The, not, the first way, which is probably like 99% of the newsletters, they get mailed out by non-profit carrier route rate, which is the least expensive way to um, mail anything. Uh, and uh, so that is approximately about 20,000 newsletters that get mailed, that get put into every mailbox in the district. but. Uh, based off of what our boundaries are and how the carrier routes work, there I think there are a couple carrier routes on the north end of the district in the unincorporated area where if we did go with those carrier routes, it would actually be going to individuals that aren't even part of our district and maybe don't care what's going on here. So for, for this one, we um, it's about 2200 uh, We do a nonprofit rate every 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 quarter. Um, and I do want to say that even this has declined, uh, decreased this year. Uh, the list had like 2,400 people on the list, and it included individuals that I don't think work at these places anymore. And, and, and also, I do want to say that we did take out every, there were people on the list that didn't live in the district. They would call and say, like, I'm to the library, I don't know what's going on. We have unfortunately had to tell them to sign up for the e news version so we can cut the cost here. So it was uh, maybe like 225 um, addresses, um, which I mean, it's the only difference um, to, to kind of go through it and sit through all the addresses. So, um, so there is a decrease in the postage because the quantity has decreased that we are printing. So what we've been paying is a little over $2,000 uh, per issue. Now it's a little over 1700 So there are I would say four things that we've done over the past year to try to get information from our patrons about the newsletter. So the first one is what we call the How Did You Hear survey, and it ran over a four-month period, and what it entailed was uh, the, the staff members that conducted programs or were overseeing events before, while they were making their announcements in the beginning, uh, about future programs or, or whatever, uh, we created a survey sheet that we wanted to make it as easy as possible to get as much information as possible. So nobody had to fill out anything individually. The programmer just said by a raise of hands, did you hear about this program via Chapter 1, e-news, website, and so forth. From our findings, um, the number one place, which, you know, is always, it seems like the number one place, is chapter one. That's how people find out about the things that are going on at the library. In second place is if they see a poster or flyer in the building. Um, we do put posters and flyers in the community, so it could go that way as well. Um, in third place is our website. Um, we do, there are pockets of the website where we do, they're called carousels, and they're kind of like slideshows, where we you know link to the calendar, um, for people to sign up for programs and stuff. But I mean, you can just go right on our website and go to the calendar right away and see what's going on. And then following that is uh, our e-newsletter, and then following that is Facebook. Um, some of the more recent things that we've been doing for surveying is a print and online survey. Um, the print and online survey was promoted uh, via uh, the e-newsletter that goes out to the individuals that want to get chapter one in their e-newsletter. We also have a bi-monthly e-newsletter uh, that um, we also sent a link in there to. Um, we posted it on Facebook, Twitter, the Journal and Topics newspaper actually did an article, a small article, about what we're trying to, to do here. It was on the library website. We also were at the Village of Niles block party where we were asking um, people, uh, attendees, to um, take our survey, and um, there were pockets of times where we were actually in the lobby 
for like an hour just to see. Um, I mean, you know, maybe people are just coming to make up their whole or going to a computer. Maybe they're coming to programs, but we wanted to get as much information as we could from people. I have a family, uh, family feed control survey says, uh, of the total responses, we received 205 responses. Of those 205 responses, 134 were uh, people that lived in the district. Most of them were uh, from single, lived in single family homes. Most of them preferred to receive it by mail. Most of them preferred, uh, no, I'm sorry, most of them would keep the newsletter for less than a month. Um, most of them would, this one's kind of obvious, attend programs as a result of reading the newsletter. Session. I'm sorry. Uh, only, uh, most of them would keep it longer than a month, not less than a month. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. That's okay. Kind of wrong. So about 75, you know, if you're doing the math, about 75 people would keep it longer. Thank you. Sorry. Um, and then last but not least, 122 of the 134 prefer it more often and or just as often. Um, this one was probably the most time consuming, but probably most educational for, for me and for Robin who works in my department who actually has market research, a market research background, so she was very, very instrumental in figuring out how to get, ask the best questions and get the, the, the best um, input from the patrons. So we promoted the, the ability to do the usability testing on our two e-newsletters, and I do have to say that like instantaneously there was like 30 emails, like just like da, 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 da. people like to give their input. Sometimes you think like you know when you go to a store and someone says you want to do something, you go no 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 no. But I mean there there are people that like to state their opinions. So um, we got a lot of people that wanted to do it, but because the usability testing was one on one meeting with these individuals for a half an hour to go over a little bit of a scavenger hunt of the newsletter. Are they finding things easily? Are they finding things more difficultly? Uh, we did also ask them the same questions that we had in the print and online survey. Um, and we did it over a two week period. We had 12 participants and I do have to say I'm very proud of it. We actually had a couple teams that here to participate. So um, it was a wide range of, eight, of, of ages that, um, that we interviewed for the usability of testing. So the next two slides are what did they say and then possible improvements for the future. And a lot of the same results came from the print and online survey and the usability testing. So this is basically a compilation of all those areas. So the, the comment that I read constantly is people love the newsletter. And I say it like that because literally, like every everybody had something to say about just love for the newsletter. People in caps writing, do not discontinue, discontinue it. Maybe they thought from the survey it was gonna go kaputs, but um, you know, do not discontinue it. People like to gather with their family, open up the newsletter, and pick things because we offer something for everybody. Um, what they would put in their family calendars, they thought it was visually appealing. Um, dynamic to who the organization is, it's the legacy of activity of the organization, important to know what's here when I'm here. Um, some people, even though they probably get in the mail still when they come in, because we have it in the vestibule, easily pick up a newsletter to see what's going on while they're there at that moment. Um, they didn't think with the pages that we have right now, which is 16 pages, that it was not too many pages for all of the things that we offer. It was a way to get to know the library, it shows effort and energy of the library, and it shows libraries want to engage with patrons. And it likes hearing engage because it's one of the four words in our today line. So, <laughs> um, so that's what they said. Uh, they said many, many, many other things that I didn't want to put a million bullet points. So some possible improvements, so this is you know, some of the constructive you know, criticism, is um, patrons did uh, recommend putting in a monthly calendar in the newsletter because it would be something easy for them to rip out and put on their fridge. Um, we, as you all know, in Niles, I mean, we have a wide range of ages that live here. We do have an older demographic as well. So we were getting feedback that the font is too small, it's too condensed, um, there's too much information, it's hard to read, ESL patrons may find it difficult. Um, better defined categories, um, so patrons can follow throughout the newsletter. 
Um, people wanted to hear from the staff. They wanted to see um, some personality and not just programs and kind of basic information about the library and the newsletter. Possibly some articles, book reviews. Um, Dennis mentioned the book concierge, so maybe Greta, who was our fiction specialist, could write you know, a review about a book discussion she's doing. Um, people did say that the visuals, maybe there was too much visual clutter, make it a little cleaner. Uh, more photos of patrons, instead of, we usually use like stock photos. Um, in our in our newsletter, and I thought it was interesting what this person said about the photos is people want to see themselves, either literally themselves or people like them that come to the library and are part of this community. Um, feature a patron spotlight, or if there's anybody that you know has done like the business counseling here or found a job as a result of the resources we offer here. Um, we did have some people comment on being more culturally diverse with the graphics that we use in the newsletter. And we did get a few people that talked about the library being the hub of the community and actually wanting to see more information about community events um, that are happening in the area, not just what's going on at the library. So um, for the sake of comparison, now I don't have the cost, I don't have the circulation of any of these places, but just for the sake of appearance. Um, we have in the middle is our um, summer issue, and then we also have, and I'm sure everybody here receives these other publications as well. Um, there is uh, the Village newsletter that comes out for they just like us. It is 12 pages, um, and it does have a little bit of a thicker, glossier feel. And then there is the Park District, which is like every Park District, it's 54 pages. I'm really curious how long it takes for them to put that together and all this detail because there's a lot of information. Um, but you know, this is coming out I think quarterly as well. Um, there are some other um, in investigating costs and what we would like to recommend. You know, we really, really, really love like what the Arlington Heights Library is doing. It's really like a really nice uncoded sheet. Um, I mean, their frequency is much, much more than what we would ever recommend data monthly. So we never recommend that <laughs> due to cost. But um, what's nice is they are really able to highlight like, every single program in such a grand light. That's something we would love to do. That's a whole, you know, but it's not something that we can really attain right now. Um, you do also have the libraries that have, um, you know, more pages, a glossier feel, a thicker feel. But then you also have, um, you know, this library that it looks like a newspaper. So, you know, you kind of have a different range and, uh, of styles and, you know, from what I've kind of talked about with some of my colleagues um, is the price is all over the place based off of, I'm not sorry. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Um, so, so the price, I mean, and what people are doing are kind of, there's like a wide range. I can say what we're currently doing is probably somewhere in the middle. We're not the glossiest sheet, the thickest sheet. We're not the most expensive sheet. But then we also aren't a black and white newspaper either. Um, I feel like we're somewhere kind of in the middle. Some final thoughts. Um, and some of the thoughts um, that are included here are some of the feedback that I heard from the focus groups when we were doing strategic planning is times are changing. Uh, with stuff like Amazon Prime where you can get things tomorrow, you know, people kind of have that mindset of, you know, if, if you need to keep on reminding them of the things that are going on um, at the library or anywhere for that matter. So um, people wanting frequent reminders about what's happening. Um, there is the feedback of too much clutter and too much information that we're putting in this newsletter, um, but we kind of can't help that because programs cost money, services cost money, uh, resources cost money, so we want to you know, give them as much promotion as we possibly can. Um, as I mentioned, some of the, the people mentioned a bigger font because right now we do use a condensed font um, to fit as many things as possible, but it would be nice to offer that to patrons where we can um, maybe put less things on the page and not continue to stuff things on the page. Um, showing more personality um, from, from staff members and probably you know, their pictures so people uh, you know, can connect with them. Um, and this was a big one when I was kind of thinking about all this, which I kind of just mentioned a little bit, is you know, a lot of 
our budget does go to the collection of online resources and services. And I feel like where we are right now, we just don't have the space to give everything as grand an attention as it probably deserves because of the cost and the want of spreading that word to the patrons so they can actually use the services. So this is what our recommendation is. It is obviously up for discussion. It's just a recommendation based off of what we heard from the surveys and from the patrons is we would like to keep everything the same, same paper, same amount of pages. We would just like it delivered more often. So instead of going quarterly, we would like to go by monthly. So those are the costs of the printing. Um, the printing and the postage stay the same, it's just two more times. So with a total of a little over $44,000 annually. The library will be closing. That's it. Yeah. Thank you. So if anyone has any questions, I'm more than happy to answer. Okay. Um, are you bringing the lights up or <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, um, I'll go around and see if anyone has any thoughts about that. Um, Jim, do you have anything? <laughs> um, if we went to um, every two months, um, how, what kind of an impact would you guys have on scheduling um, uh, things? I, I know when I was working with Cindy and, and every time I wanted to do something it was an issue because you had to get it scheduled so that it could go in the newsletter and it had to be early because the newsletter was great. It was just this, you know, big consideration. So if we went more times per year, things could seem to me to be scheduled a little bit easier or harder. This would be the first that would be the first time that we would change the frequency to more often. Um, I can tell you that a, a lot of libraries and a lot of my colleagues in the library world are moving to that. So I can tell you, I can probably ask a bunch of people for advice and what they're doing. <laughs> um, there, uh, I think we would have to think of what the appropriate process would be for um, people booking programs. I know people like to do it ahead of time. Um, it would have to be something that we would have to this is just kind of like a starting you know, sure. discussion, if you will. Sure. Um, and something that we would have to kind of put into place and make sure that it's not Yeah, I crazy. think it'd still be lead time. They still need X number of weeks of lead time, right. but you'd have more opportunities. That's mm -hmm. what I was yeah. thinking. It seems like you would need not as many weeks since it's coming out more frequently. Yeah. But, um, well, for each individual issue, it's probably each like right. now, but when, I don't know what their schedule is, but six weeks, say, and then um, but you can just have more chances. If you didn't make this, you'd have yes. a better chance of doing that sort of thing. Dennis, did you want to? Uh, I'm sorry, were you done? Um, I don't know. No, that's fine. I, I guess I didn't have any thoughts on this or questions? Just the age demographics, you said you, I think you said you did how many people? For the online survey? Well, for the total survey. The total number of survey responses was 205. 205. And of that 205, 134 were people that lived in the district. Yeah, they lived in the district, but are they millennials? Are they old people? Are they, is it a mix? It is a mix. It is a mix. I think the highest demographic, the highest participant was like the 35 to 45 mm -hmm. range. So that was kind of interesting. Um, I'll go to the other side of the table. Um, Dan, do you have any uh, questions? Yeah. Um, what was our total cost last year? Do you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, per issue or per for the, the total? annual cost? Oh, annual. This is a prediction of six issues a year. Our annual cost is about thirty thousand dollars a year for four issues. So the forty-four is just. This is for adding the two more issues here. And then the other thing, um, I don't suppose you know this, or if you know how much something like this costs. I mean, what's the comparison between this and a shiny nice? Mm -hmm. Or even this and this. Well, I can tell you because I mentioned that we really like what that library is doing in oh, particular, yeah. mm -hmm. and. I know, you know, there's been conversation about glossy paper and whatnot. 
But believe it or not, this uncoded matte paper is more expensive than what we currently have. So that's why it was sad to say kaputs because until we actually got you know some numbers, we really really like you know what how that looks and it's very high quality and very very attractive and something that people are going to pick up when they get it in the mail. I mean, how many things do you just go like this with because either it's not appealing or you don't care. What we're trying to do here, which is why I wouldn't suggest the black and white is, as you can see, the black and white is, mm -hmm. I feel like you've lost all appeal. Mm -hmm. The information is there, but I feel like you've just lost, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. the appeal. Well, they, well I, I mean, I love it. I love when it comes, I sit there and I read it from a page. I certainly wouldn't want it less. I just thought, like you say, now I'm glossy, oh, it must be less money. But you're saying it's more. Well, they say that it absorbs more ink. Ah. So that's mm -hmm. where, um, that's where some of that comes. Mm -hmm. Actually, all paper uh, comes glossy. They spray the non glossy stuff on it. Oh. Okay. No. Interesting. <laughs> I'm kidding. You. <laughs> That's what I figured. Um, but, yeah, because I was thinking, compared to one the other, they really, except for one's glossy and one's not, they're, where in the heck is, oh, here's ours. <laughs> That's the main difference between these, is one is glossy and one's not. They, they both have some appeal, but if one, because this is more expensive, well, then, yeah, I have a couple questions. Um, so our survey ended up being um, a total of 146 people that are in the district. I think it was 134. Oh, I was adding the 12 one-on-ones as well, oh. right? Okay. Well, I would just stick to the 130. Okay, that's fine. All right, um, I, I definitely think it's a much too small of a sample size to think that we're getting any type of response, <laughs> negative or positive, from the now it's only 20,000 that we mail. Um, I, I think we certainly need to do more about understanding the value of this mailing. I, I'm a little surprised. I didn't realize that our mailing cost was an additional 1,700. So there's the printing cost and the mailing cost, and um, I know they're 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 just being mailed, except for the 2,200. Those are direct addresses, <coughs> those here, there, and everywhere. But 20-some thousand is just carrier routes. And um, for, for mailing so many and having such a small uh, number of people identify what they think of these, I don't think that's, that's a good gauge. Um, that's one aspect. The other is, there are several different ways, certainly, we can consider printing this uh, publication. Um, I'm concerned why Visio Graphics is the only quote we have, even for the exact item that we've been using. If you switch to different printers, depending on their size and what they print, there's an array of prices. Uh, paper is, all, is one factor, but the size of the company and what they can do for us would vary as well. Um, I think I think we need, first of all, I think we need more input from the residents. And then I think we need quotes about variations. Um, and then my third point is, I thought our focus for this publication was to inform the residents of what programs we offer. I don't know that we need to expand on pictures of staff and show everybody who we are. I mean, we need to figure out what are we trying to do here. Um, I think when you come to this library, you meet the staff, and, and the staff has had major, made very positive impressions on people. I don't know that we need to add more um, intimate, uh, like, relationships or details. I think we need to focus on what our goal is. 
But honestly, I'm not sure that based on the number of people who come to this library and who attend our programs, um, that, that, that publication and the way we are mailing it really is beneficial. So we need to come up with some ideas that show it is. Because for 20,000 mailings, for 30 grand a year, how many people come here? Not a very small percentage. So are they being thrown like uh, Greg brought to our attention? The front door of a condo, which I know they've been doing for years. I mean, that's not a great way to mail it. But I'm a little confused as well. When Greg was giving us some details, he mentioned there were 23,000 addresses times two. What did he say last month? Or 22,000. So, I mean, even that number doesn't make sense. That we would drop off two per resident. Why would we give two to each household? I would think one's enough. I don't understand what you meant by that. I think she, Linda was trying to get a, a, a total number. And I thought I highlighted it because I was going to ask you. Yeah, I, I don't know what campus but that and it's that that too is a different number but again we certainly don't need two of those in a household one for a family is plenty oh here it is I only get one. Yeah, um, I yeah. well I, I hear many people get two and yeah. honestly for the first time I got two but let me just mention here it is there were 22,500 addresses times two per household that's 58,000 total and the cost was 5,000 but I think that was just an estimate, but w w what kind of numbers are we talking about here? Twenty-two five addresses, two per household. Oh, are you? S and then I think you were telling her that's how we're reaching our district is supposedly fifty-eight thousand. But that doesn't doesn't, that doesn't make mess. sense because even when I had three different names in my house, I still own that one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the twenty-two thousand five. Well, this two. Really yeah, and I have two names. Yeah. The twenty-two thousand five is yeah. consistent. Uh, with uh, Sasha's numbers, he mentioned 20,000, and I think 22 something. He said previously there was 24 something before he audited the list and pulled about 200 and some odd uh, names off of it. So that's consistent. Uh, what I might have been referring to is uh, re trying to relate our service area population, which is about 58 to 60,000 people spread over 22,500 households. So, okay, I see what you're saying. So people. It, yeah, there's an average of two and a half okay. people in each one of the households. So I think 2.4 is what the census says. Okay, but actually our focus is on the 22,500 addresses. That's, yeah. that's who we yeah, need to yeah. figure out what we're doing. Okay, yeah. all right, well, that makes you know, sense. You're right. We're you're interested right. in the service uh, population and we get to them through the address. Um, and I, and I do want to mention, um, you know, some of the stories that we have heard about a uh, pile of uh, chapter ones being, you know, in a vestibule of a kind of um, We've talked to the uh, post office about that. That's illegal. That's illegal. They've been doing it for years. It's illegal. You catch them doing it, they kind of probably be fired. Or at least have a for, the, for the postal worker to dump oh, it into the vestibule. Oh, it's just not it's, the newsletter. It's shop and save and everybody. It's and, illegal. Yeah. It's not legal. I know, and the, the management then just swoops them up and sure. throws them all off. Yeah. yeah. That's what I would do if I managed to go. <laughs> uh, all right, well, I, I haven't had a chance yet. Are you done? I'd like to see us spend more time on this. I'd like to get um, quotes. I, and I, I, I like something the quotes. I don't want to forget because you mentioned sure, it. Sure. I want to answer anything that I can. What I do want to mention about the quotes is um, there aren't quotes from, we didn't go out to bid or any of that kind of stuff because I want to know what you guys think sure. we should do. So I didn't want it to be a circus of quotes. Right. So I was working with our current vendor just so I can get some numbers to put on the table um, of what it would cost if we stayed with where we are right now. Mm -hmm just to, to move forward for the sake of discussion. So that is the only reason why oh, no, you know, no, I would no. totally do that. But that no. was oh, I just for the sake of this exercise. Oh, absolutely. No, what I'm saying is since 2015, we've been talking about this cost. And um, you know, you would think over these years, we, may, we would have branched out. And even if we wanted not to change the publication, just to get a price when there were actually a couple more printers in this area, they're gone now. 
but um, Can I say something too sure, about that sure. One? <laughs> is um, I think it was your request maybe two or three years ago about this whole bidding thing, and I think it was featured in maybe Susan's director's report where I did go out and solicit bids, and believe it or not, Visographic came back the cheapest. Um, the next one up was I think at least. I don't know, I'm just, just going to say I'm not confident 100%, but at least $400 extra per issue. Not to mention the people that came in at $8,000, and I'm like, we're not, you know, like the Sears catalog here. I mean, sure, why so sure. much? Mm -hmm. um, so we have done some investigation. Yes, it hasn't, it didn't happen right now, mm -hmm. but it, it has happened. The exercise has happened. Um, so that is why, at the, from that point, we continue to sit with this graphic. I still think we should spend time on, on, on a lot more, um, I mean, I don't think going around the table, asking a few questions is going to answer the distribution of 22,500 publications and we've only had 134 responses. I mean, we should have, we've got to engage more with our, um, our um, resident base. Do you have any suggestions how they could do that? Oh, I'm sorry. There's all kinds. Do you get any metrics off of the online so that if somebody clicks on the newsletter, do you get any hit or metrics that come back and say 100 people went to the newsletter? The metrics that I can get kind of off the top of my head is... Yeah, I don't look at yeah. for numbers, but you do get some. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, for... On our website, it's on a web page, so I do have some metrics of how many people have gone to that web page. Yeah. I do have for like the open rates for the e newsletter that gets sent out with that link. Cool. Um, okay. Well, and was that indicated by the pie chart you showed earlier? Um, it was indicated in our output in the beginning of how people can get the newsletter. What's in the pie chart is, and actually I don't have that number, and I can promise that it's more than 134 responses of the show your hand things. People do come to the programs here, you know. So um, that I think was definitely in the hundreds, maybe even in the thousands of responses that we received. In there, email was one of them. Um, as an option, is that what you're asking? Sorry if I didn't answer it correctly, but I want uh, I was talking about um, when Dennis asked if you have metrics that show who clicked on the, first of all, it shows you not just who clicks on the web page, but who clicks on chapter yeah. one, should we tell you that? You can track the links, anything that's linked and then you can track how many people actually click okay. on it. Okay, and I wasn't sure if that was what you were showing us earlier in the PowerPoint on the pie chart or if yeah. that was something else. What I was showing there is based off of the tallies of the hands being raised, how many people oh. heard about the programs in the oh, okay. okay. And how many, how many was there total in their pack? I think that's what we need. Yeah, I'm sorry, I do not have that number <laughs> right now. Because you just said hundreds if not thousands. Yeah. I so was, I think we're missing. I thought well, the see, I could tell hours. just from one sure, of, of the programs yeah. I went to, that room downstairs was packed. No, I understand that, but uh, Carolyn has a very good point. We're talking about 134 people over a, a mailing of 22,000, but we don't have that figure of how many responded for the, the pie chart. If, if you want, because I think the next part is talking about the tax levy, I can go get that information so we can have that this evening if you would like. Um, is that something you can grab my dad or? Because okay. I, I, I did not include that, I think that is a very important thing to put in there. So, uh, uh, you, we were talking about the newsletter, the semi monthly uh, newsletter that Robin mailed out for over a weekend. Mm -hmm. And that, that list of emails that it went to is, if I remember, Eight or nine thousand? Fourteen thousand. Well, excuse me, fourteen thousand. Um, and, and the click through rate, I thought you told me was like under 20%, like mm -hmm. 15%. I think from the one that she sent Saturday morning, which we tried to do it, like, because you can schedule one to do it, she was 7 30 in the morning, thinking that when you're drinking your coffee, <laughs> You're you would go through your emails and you would find us and you would see what's going on here. And I think it was like about a 15% open rate. Um, and I do have an average open rate based from MailChimp, MailChimp which is a provider. You can do your newsletters on there. And actually, the average is 24% for your open rate. So is that our open rate or just in general? In general. 
ours for that specific one was 15. I think overall, I think we're close to 20% overall, but there's been some that were 24%, like when we migrated to Polaris and our subject was important information about your account. <laughs> Everyone clicked on that one. <laughs> um, but uh, we tried to you know, engage them in the subject line so they could open it, it doesn't just say, you know, library events or something, what is it in Okay. In, in the registration process, when we have to uh, register for a program, is that have any a larger capability for you to solicit any more information out of that um, form? It's not readily available in Communicore that we currently use. I think we might be able to add like a custom field. Mm -hmm. But what we were using before was called events. And there was actually some like a field that was part of the program that you could include how did you hear and make it be mandatory. And even that, and by like a landslide, I was looking at that information today as well. I didn't want to provide it because it was so old in a few years. Um, but even that by a landslide was chapter one. You know, they maybe let us say it was like next in line, but. Can I ask you to get a, can you email a copy of this so I can just go over it again? Right. Well, right. I tried I writing real fast. Um, this other piece of information that you mentioned, I don't know how many people would like to see that right now. Should we ask Sarah to go get it? I, I, I think we can wait till next, next meeting. meeting. Well, all right, okay. First of all, let me ask, do you want to wait till the next meeting to get more information and discuss this then, further then, or I do we want to just go around the room and I would like some to. consensus now? I understand what you're saying, Carol, and I'm asking for some input from other people, too. Come on to the other choice. All right, well, this, <laughs> all right, this is uh, what I'm going to ask you first. Do you want more information, or are you ready to express an opinion right now? So I'm going to go around and ask you that right now. Diane? Um, I'd like to see some other um, estimates by other companies, I guess, at this time, as long as we haven't done that in a couple of years. Well, I think what Sasha was saying is he wants to know, he doesn't really want to go out for bid until he knows oh. what people would be bidding for. Is it going to be four issues a year? Is it going to be six? Is it going to be something else like that? So I think you did do that several mm -hmm. years ago, and uh, we could see what you got several years ago, but it sounded like physical glass was, physical glass was far and away the lowest mm -hmm. bidder at that time. So, um, you know, I think that we, we could go out for bid again, but I think the question is, what are we bidding for? What, what are we even asking uh, printers for? So I, I'm going to go around, and I'm going to I just wanted to respond to her question. Um, She's asking, you know, since we don't have other um, bids, and they're not necessarily bids, they would be quotes, we don't have to submit a bid. We can contact different size printers and we could tell them what we're doing four times a year or he would like to increase it and they can send you a quote. Okay. And um, so she can get her information and so can all of us. Well, all right. May I just, I mean, I think yeah. he, he did do this exercise. I just think, I think 44,000 is a pretty good number. Yeah. I, I think it's very likely that the only the answers are only going to go up from 44. So I think you know you can consider that that's probably pretty close to what it's going to be because Sasha tried locally. He tried to you know reach certain more personally. What would you do for your neighborhood library kind of thing? And he, it just he wasn't getting the numbers. So we could get you higher numbers, but I don't think we're going to be able to get you lower numbers. Well, I, I wish I could say that the impression this was the number of years. It was a couple years ago. Years ago. Maybe three. So I, I don't mean to squelch anything, I just think, I, I'm okay. not sure holding the process for right. that is going to be helpful. I also don't think that, um, you know, statistically when the village was running their survey and they were really pushing it and they had people all out in the community, I believe they only got 200 answers. Right. It's I, very hard to get it's answers It's very hard to get answers on surveys. But other than survey information, other than doing another whole survey, is there any other piece of information that you need? You've done yet? Or Anything else you want to ask me? Otherwise, I'll ask Patty. Or what was the other information besides the survey you were asking for? Was there something else? Like what did we do this past time? Or like that they were holding this up? Was it just because they wanted more surveys? Is that the main reason? Or I think you're asking. I'm asking in general. 
I think it was just Carolyn who said she wanted more, more people service. charged. That's the only thing I think. All right. Well, I think we offer so many programs, mm -hmm. and and if our goal is to have more input from the community and more attendance, larger attendance, and I, I definitely think that uh, marketing is the way to go. Okay. So this is this is what I how I plan to handle this. First of all, I want to know if anyone wants any more information from Sasha before expressing an opinion. And then the opinion I'm going to ask you for is. Do you want to continue with four issues? Do you want to go to six issues? Or do you want to do something else? Is that a and vote or is that a It's a consensus, just a consensus right sure. now. Because we're not voting for an expenditure right now. Right. We're not voting for any expenditure. Uh, but that is sort of direction that we're going to give at this point in time. So first of all, before I ask you your opinion, whether you want four or six or something else, I'm asking you, do you need more information? Is there something else that you need to answer that question? Yes. I just have one question, and I might have missed it. Yes. How many times were the other libraries doing it? Like how many times was Arlington Heights? How many times was Skokie doing it? How many mm -hmm. times was Skokie? Like, what think, did you? I think Skokie does it every two months. Arlington Heights, I think it's every month. Oh, that's right. You did Except say for month. the summer, probably due to summer reading, they do a three monther. Mm -hmm. Um, just to kind of compact. So I guess generally, are you saying that most places are doing it six one more times? And then, mm -hmm. do did it sound like their numbers for programming were better, or or was it getting the info, or was it just stimulating because it's more, it's making them think about the library a little bit more that because they're getting. That is definitely one of the goals of the continuous, you know, reminder that we exist. Hey, we have hello. these things going mm -hmm. on. Um, you know the what we say around here because we have the three the three months and a quarter is we should do a scavenger hunt and who can find that third quarter because it's so deep within the Junes and the Julys for example or the whatever September's and October's um, so this would be kind of like this a more constant flow of information out there uh, fresh information. Um, do, do you think that if we did it for a year, that being able to look at the statistics from now to then, that we would be able to get a decent, I don't know, idea whether that money was well spent or not? I mean, or do you, I mean, obviously so you do, obviously you do because otherwise you wouldn't propose it. Mm -hmm. But, um, What's the or is it that like with a movie, I mean, like I see, um, you know, like, Paddington to 45. Like, is that just like an average? That's what we usually get for a movie anyway. You know? Or do you think that, you know, then we could add another movie because in two months, like, because mm -hmm. we have more or less time, we can maybe add a little bit more programming that really doesn't cost us anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. we can, or do we have the rooms already filled up anyway and we really don't have any more? I think some people, some programmers like yeah, to do something I mean, that's really, really far in advance. Some people kind of closer to what the copy deadline is of figuring out what they're going to do. So, I mean, it's a wide range of what room is available and what isn't. Um, do you find that any program really, programming really doesn't get marketed because of the time frame? That we really aren't able, except on Facebook or mm -hmm. anything, maybe digital, that things can't get into the chapter one because of the time restraint. Well, one one piece of feedback that I that I can give is there have been times, I'll give examples right now, but I mean there have been times mm -hmm. in my, my work here of oh like shoot like we missed it and it's three months that we have to wait to do something that's timely topical um, that people are talking about in the community and it's like yes we can promote it on the other channels but chapter one being really the number one place of where people are retrieving information, we would have that opportunity right now if something comes up to include it. Because we'd be doing it more often. Any other pieces of information? Thank you. Does any of you feel like an express opinion? If doing it more often, is there an opportunity to have fewer pages? I did look at the fewer pages, and it wasn't the biggest. You know, so I figured we would look at, because you'd have to go by like, even numbers, so sure. instead of 16 to be 12, yeah. or 8 or 4. So to lose four pages, yeah, I, I didn't think that it was. Yeah. Okay. 
and, and I just also feel like part of what we're after here is to get it more readable, have it not be such an amount of information that's crammed onto the pages. I mean, I think that, and that does a beautiful job laying it out and makes it as readable as possible, but it's really dense. Mm -hmm. And it there needs more white space, it needs more room to breathe, and I don't think it is just for programs, I think it's for reminding people, mm -hmm. this is where your tax dollars are going. Sure. Well, not only that, I mean, it's just that you have passports, or that we have a, um, what is it, the uh, notary, I mean, all of those are in there, yeah, and it's a reminder. Yeah, that you can I mean, that's really good because sometimes you might not need that, but also you're like, oh, I forgot that they had that. I mean, so it's not just the programming; it's it's all the resources. So, this, so the total cost for six versus the total cost for four is how much? Like the difference? It's probably thirteen, fourteen thousand, and we're talking about a seven million dollar budget. Right. <laughs> uh, you know. So, I, you know, I would argue, you know, other things. Uh. So, uh, I didn't actually express any opinion yet, um, and I just want to say I, I really like Checker 1, too. I think it's great. I do use it, and I hang on to it, and the way I use it is I sort of peel up page by page as I no longer need it, like the children's card or the community card. But then parts of it are still in my desk at the end of the three months with the circles around it and arrows and things like that. <laughs> so um, I really do use it and I, I find it very useful. And um, I, I would like to get it a little bit more often because sometimes it's so far out that mm -hmm. an event is coming up. Uh, I'd also like, as one of, one of your patrons mentioned, an actual calendar. Um, I have newsletters from other organizations that do that, and I find it very useful uh, to actually see mm -hmm. the calendar and see what's happening on each day. So I just throw that out there. Um, so um, that's, a, that's my opinion, but now I'm going to go around the room with one more time, and I'm going to ask you for uh, each for an opinion. I don't want a long discussion. I just want to know, uh, do you want four? Do you want six? you want something else. And uh, Diana, I'll, I'll start with you. Uh, yeah, I'd like to try six issues. Okay. All right, Patty. Six. Carolyn. Um, I'm, I'm not really interested in that aspect of it. I was looking for other information, so I'll just pass. Okay. Six is fine. Right. For a trial. Yeah, for sure. Dennis. Four. Four. Okay. Tim? I, I'd like the six, too, but I, I like... Um, Linda's uh, uh, idea about let's reevaluate it in a year or let's reevaluate it in a year. Okay. All right. Um, I, I think that's a good way to go, and I'll, I'll, I would agree with that too. Six, but we do want to reevaluate it in a year. And uh, I think we probably would like you to check on vendors again. I don't really think we're probably going to find a lower cost, but we always find it reassuring to know that. Mm -hmm. Someone's checked again to make sure that this is the lowest, best cost that we can get. Particularly if we're going to a different number of issues. I don't know that that really matters to any vendors. Uh, but that, that we always like to be reassured that we're really getting the best deal possible. Mm -hmm. um, and if I could just mention one yes. thing, is it will probably take us at least a couple cycles, because now we have to go into redesigning it. Yes. Right. yes. Um, because we want to. Yes. Create more white space. Yes. We want yes. to see what the categories look like and make it more easy to read and so forth. Yeah. So, um, you want to have a meet with just you? No, I'm not just. <laughs> I'm not really going to do that. I'm not. I'm not I'm no, I'm to do that. Um, so maybe a book review or something. Like, you know. Okay, Gary. So are you thinking so, possibly in the spring? Probably at least two cycles. So spring yeah, or summer or summer. spring. Okay, okay. for spring. No, we got fall coming. The fall just came out, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so mm -hmm. winter. So when you're spraying the summer would be the uh, introduction. Yeah. And yeah, the Visigraph, is that a contract for the year or is it just by issue? Just by issue that we do that. Okay. Right. okay. So, um, uh, I don't know if we need a motion on our next uh, meeting or anything about this. I don't think so. I think it's, it's just giving us direction. It was already in the budget, so yeah. All right. So then we're going to ask for mm -hmm. discussion. Yeah. So you're going to go forward with what? Six. Six on a trial basis. Okay. But that wasn't a vote, though. It wasn't, but it's... Within. Because it doesn't say it in the agenda. No, no. Uh, I think the director was just looking for a direction as to how to spend the amount that's already been allotted in the budget.
for the chapter nine uh, publication. Uh, so okay. Okay. Uh, All right, can we focus on our PowerPoint here? <coughs> okay, so um, this is uh, some information that I uh, wanted to share with the board regarding the uh, property tax discussion for the 2018 levy. Uh, just to remind everybody, 94% of the total revenue of the library comes from property taxes. Uh, the rest comes from uh, replacement taxes, capital grant, other grants, investment income, lost books, paper print, uh, the book sale, passports, and the miscellaneous items. Uh, uh, just to go back for a second, you can see by comparison, Village of Niles and Niles Park District uh, get 11% uh, of their revenue and 52% of their revenue, respectively, from property taxes. Cut in Park District. The um, 2017 uh, tax levy, which was the levy which we just finished collecting on, um, was collected during uh, 2018. The first installment in February, the second in August, is city taxpayer in Ellison County. The 2017 levy, levy was 2.1% higher or over the uh, 2016 levy. Um, the, uh, uh, the final levy was 6859000 and the aggregate extension was 706703. The difference between uh, the levy and the aggregate extension is that the aggregate extension includes loss and costs for uncollected, uh, uncollectible taxes and different things of that nature. So we send the county 6859 and in turn what they do is calculate the $7 million number and then that's what they use to spread into the community. Um, the 1819 uh, budget used the final 2017 levy for the entire year, and the board is to set uh, 2018 levy to be collected in 2019. So, some considerations for the uh, for the uh, property tax uh, compounded annual growth rate um, continues to be 2.7%. Uh, special revenue funds are running with nearly zero fund balance. There's a deficit in the building and site fund and a, and a slight offset offset in the uh, in the other funds to net to zero. Uh, the uh, the village just approved four new TIF districts, uh, which will result in lost revenue in the future, but not until those mature further down the road. So on day one, you're not going to lose any revenue. But in year 10, when there has been some improvements, Hopefully. And, yeah, and you have a greater uh, equalized assessed valuation, or EAV, in that district, it will start to pull taxes into the, into the TIF district, which will then be used for more improvements. Um, the, uh, uh, the Milwaukee Tui TIF district, uh, the village is planning on closing that. And, uh, when they close it, I believe there's about $7 million in that district. They're going to take $3.5 million, and they're going to refund that to the taxing districts uh, that are a part of the TIF. And when will that be? When will that be funded? The plan payout yeah. uh, will be about $195,000, and no. it's supposed to be in 2019. Sometime in 2019. Yeah. Um, but that's a one-time payout. The real value of closing the TIF is that all of that excess uh, uh, equalized assessed valuation gets returned to the library tax rolls. So that will result in uh, a one ninety five, one hundred ninety five thousand dollars approximately uh, every year going forward. Okay, that'll be you know, added to what we actually are able to take from the you know, from the uh, tax levy. We, you know, we still have uh, growth and expansion and, and uh, some of the uh, services around the library. We have some strategic planning goals. Um, the property tax freeze is less likely uh, given, uh, you know, given the lock, you know, the uh, uh, gridlock in Springfield, uh, but it's still discussed from time to time, and I'm not sure that that's as much of a factor as it was last year. Now looking at a little bit of history, um, we have, I've split the levy into two parts. One is the general uh, fund levy, which is uh, the blue, 
coming there. And then on top of that, we have the special uh, revenue funds levy. So, you know, audit and liability insurance, workers' compensation, social security, uh, building and site, and I'm missing unemployment insurance and workers' temp insurance. Uh, so you can see in uh, 2012, the levy was over over $7 million at, at this high point. It was $7 million, I, I got all the numbers down here uh, uh, on the bottom of the graph, $7 million, and then it decreased to a slow point in 2014 when it was 5 million 7 And ultimately last year it was 6 million 859 562 which is still $250,000 less than the high point in 2012. You can also see that um, in, the, in these years the orange layer is kind of thin because what we're doing is during that period of time is draining about a million three that was built up in the special revenue fund. So we were starving those funds on purpose in order to bring the fund balances down. And then in 2017, we were back up to about $600,000 in order to provide uh, uh, current resources. If we take a look at the general fund uh, projection, which is the operating fund of the library that provides day-to-day -day operations, we have some history starting in 1516. Uh, this is total uh, general fund revenue, so its share of property taxes plus interest and fines and so forth, uh, compared to uh, general fund expenditures of 5,183 for about a million three in uh, surplus. In 1617, we had a deficit due primarily to the payment of the $2 million to IMRF to, you know, to defray the cost of it uh, by paying off the uh, uh, accrued liability. Uh, paid the last piece in 17 to 18, where we had a, a, a surplus of 582000 And then uh, 18 19 reflects the budget numbers. Uh, 1920 on out reflects the add back of $195,000 as we discussed on an earlier slide due to the... So that, that's assuming that's in there, is that yes. right? Yes. Okay. Uh, and then growing the general fund expenditures from the $5,757,000 uh, budget number in 1819 by 2.7% going forward. Um, so where... Uh, when we get up to 21-22, we still have a uh, $670,000 surplus. Um, however, it degrades by roughly $140,000 or $150,000 a year, um, holding, holding everything stable. Here's a graphical representation of the uh, uh, expenses and the revenues for the general fund. At this point, this peak right here, where the, where the uh, uh, expenditures exceed the revenue is 1617, where we had a uh, two million dollar payment to uh, IMRF, and then you know we could follow the rest of the curve. The special revenue funds, uh, all the funds are depleted except liability insurance. Uh, that fund will run out of money in 21-22, so we would look to add probably another thirty to forty thousand dollars in. Um, in allocations to that fund through our tax levy in order to stay current with our liability taxes. Um, and um, for all the other funds, we're trying to budget annual needs and erase the deficit of uh, building and site. Uh, total annual funds deficit, uh, or total, yeah, the funds deficit in 1819 is expected uh, to be zero, and annual spending needs are approximately $570,000 in the current budget year. And again, there's a list of the different types of special revenue funds that the, uh, uh, that the library has. Uh, to remind everybody, limitations uh, for the 2018 property tax levy is 5% uh, or CPI, whichever is less than any given year. Uh, the CPI increase for 2018 uh, is 2.1%, 2 
The state of Illinois goes through trouble with calculating it and handing it out to all of the taxing uh, authorities in the state. So if you look at the uh, uh, limitations in 2018 uh, aggregate extension would be 7215512 which is last year's aggregate extension times 1 plus 2.1% or an increase of approximately $150,000. Um, so that's the limit on the upside, and you know the, that's the last slide I have. So. Um, I'm just going to start off the question, if you know, ask other people. Um, so I went yesterday about the deficit and building the site funds. Yes. And are we going to be, if we were not to increase our levy for the special revenue funds, do we have enough to cover our expenditures and our building and site funds in the coming year? Or? Yeah, well, there is a uh, there is a cap to how much we can levy for building and site, and right now we're uh, we are levied at the cap, which is a little over uh, a little over three hundred thousand um, dollars. So what we uh, uh, what we spend out of that fund is. I'd say about 215 or so. Um, let, me, let me give you the exact number of what we budgeted and building in site. I think it's good in a moment here. Um, we, we budgeted for the current fiscal year 206,000. Mm -hmm. So uh, the deficit is, I believe, 150 or so thousand. At this point, so, so you, you think know, we'll be in the black at the end of the year in those funds? Uh, at the end, uh, definitely at the end of the next year, possibly by the end of this year. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, because there's some kind of differences okay. because of the way that the you know, levy faces it. So. All right. Um, anyone else? Uh, I'll go around and ask anyone else's questions on the presentation. Jim, do you have some presentations on that? Dennis? Anything? Uh, Linda? Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I have a question on this general fund projection page. I think I'm not understanding. Um, it shows the general fund revenue, general fund expenditures. And um, you mentioned that we're going to have a deficit. And, and I don't no, we've already had one in 16, so, 17. Okay. In, the, in the general fund. But the rest of the years were fine. So. Yeah, yeah, you oh. can see the rest of the years are black. Oh, now. I thought we were concerned that we were going to have a deficit and I didn't see it. No. Okay, thank black you. Is good, black is good. That's what I thought. All right, thank you. Any other questions? All right, well, I'm actually what I plan to do right now is just go around the room and take a consensus. Enough, uh, a final vote on the tax levy by any we'll take a consensus as to what people want to do in terms of um, do you want to raise the levy, keep the levy the same, or reduce the levy? And if you say anything other than keep the levy the same, I want to know what you're suggesting in terms of raising the levy or lowering the levy. So we're just going to do a consensus. We will not be voting on this tonight. The vote will be next week, but we need to give our staff some direction as to where we're leaning in terms of the levy. So, so the vote would be next. Right. Right. You do have to next determine month. the next levy month. tonight and then we would come back with the ordinance. So this is your chance to tell us what you want the ordinance to say. Right, because they have to prepare it, they have to draft it. Um, and, you know, in conformance with whatever we tell them. And then the actual passing of the ordinance would be next month. Uh, so, uh, I'm just going to start up with going around the room. Excuse me, before you do that, can I ask Greg a question? Mm -hmm. Greg, I'm looking at this general fund project projection um, where are we at? We're at 1819, so it shows we have a surplus of $900,000. Now, we're concerned that it's too low. Is that why we want to raise this? Is that not enough that you want in a surplus to feel comfortable? I mean, is that? I haven't. I haven't made a suggestion one way or the other. Well, I'm trying to I, understand why we would increase. This isn't a safe number. Is that why? No, it's up to you to determine what's safe and what's not safe. Well, I'm not the numbers person, so I'm looking at. We have nine hundred thousand dollars left, just looking at the general fund. 
Then I go back to my balance sheet and we have $10 million in investments or cash. So if something, sh if we didn't raise the levy and something would happen, we still have $10 million to fall back on. Am I understanding this balance sheet correctly? Uh, I'm sorry. Um, in that $10 million, mm -hmm. uh, there's about $1.4 million, I believe, that's allocated to special uh, reserve. So, painting the building, clocking the building, putting the in chiller on. In addition to what's in the no, budget? No, that's part of the $10 million. That's part so, of the $10 million. Dollars. My question move is, in finger, addition to the budget... Me, excuse me, move your finger over to special reserve. Right. You see that? Is it 1.4 million? So this 1.4 is in addition to the amount that's in the budget, or is this representing the number that's in the it's budget? Separate, but part of the 10 million dollars. Okay, so uh, one four, one million four out of 10 million. Okay. I still think that's a in addition. Question. In addition. Mm -hmm. uh, in that 10 million dollars are. Um, uh, tax receipts that we've received, but they haven't spent yet for the current year. So, you know, unfortunately it's, you know, we, we get a big bite two times a year, mm -hmm. and whenever you take a look at the balance sheet, you're going to have some of that in there, some of that not in there. Right. I'd say that, you know, what represents a uh, true, true available cash is probably about six million, which is about, which is equal to about one year's of, uh, right. One year. And that's just today to cover us for one year. So when's the next time we could consider a levy increase? Every year, correct? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. That that clarifies that for me. Thank you. Um, okay. All right. Back then, back to taking consensus. Um, should I go this way? That way? Anybody have any questions? Whichever way makes you feel. All right. I'm going to start with that. Uh, a flat levy would result in a balance. Budget, we're not we're not deficit spending, correct? No, no. Uh, as a matter of fact, if um, if we do nothing to the levy, is what the projection shows. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't factor in an increase except for the money that the uh, village has said that they're going to return to us and the nice. and the associated uh, equalized assessed valuation that we'll be able to factor taxes on instead of putting it into the okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does. You know, I'm always, I, I've been an advocate for cutting, cutting costs of the library. So, you know, so that's where I would say, you know, as far as the, the tax levy goes, I, I'm not interested in seeing it increase. Uh, I, uh, that's just my, my opinion, though. Okay. All right. Okay, well, it looks like we um, would be fine if, if we kept it flat, so I'm, I'm, we're keeping it flat. Okay. Um, Kelly? Um, I'm comfortable with leaving it flat, looking at our investments. I feel okay. like there's our question. All right. Thank you. Okay. Flat. Okay. Flat. Okay. Uh, actually, once I was sort of reassured about the special revenue funds, uh, I'm going okay to flat. So I think uh, you have a consensus. So what, what's, the, help me understand when you say flat. Not raising the money. So, so keeping so the same, same as last year. And what was last year's? Uh, six the aggregate of the, I mean, because the county board raises this. So it's 6.8, isn't it? Eight, six yeah, 6,859 something. Um, okay. It's not one of the, I, I, my computer went down because. I care, it's on our sheets. We're backing up. I'm sorry for the uh, fumbling through this. Six million eight fifty nine five sixty two. Okay. And the aggregate extension once once the county has lost some costs in there is seven million oh sixty seven one oh three, which is you know, which is what it, you know what was extended to all the properties this year. Um so I, I think um, that tells our staff what our opinion is, what uh, our feeling is about where the levy should go this uh, coming year. And we'll ask you to drop the appropriate paperwork so that we can vote on it at our next meeting. Okay. okay. All right. So, um, do we have any unfinished business? All right. Is there anything else? Anyone else has anything? I had a question and a, about a comment from a patron, and I, I just missed bringing it up before. It's about frustration. Um, 
she said, or this person, I have called this problem to your attention before, and obviously it is not important to the board. The problem is, this is with part of the report that the director, director, director. Yeah, and yeah. she says the problem is with your notification of reserve books being held. She feels that the telephone message she receives doesn't give enough information. Um, and apparently, I guess she's complained before. And I was wondering, could we change that message to be a little more I'm afraid not as a system wide kind of thing? But the fact that it says at the end, the thing about go back to a computer with the three exclamation points, I assume from that they must have been getting electronic notices before. And they must somehow, with their email, maybe didn't transfer into the new system and the migration. But they didn't leave any contact information, so I can't tell them that. Um, but I suspect that must be what it is, because because when you get the email, it tells you exactly, it tells exactly what, you're what you're yeah. getting. But you know that she's so getting the email because of that message? I, I, I don't she know. Did she, she, she put that in her message. Did she? Okay, I didn't see that. But you know what? I do get those messages at home. And honestly, I would love to know what I'm picking up. Is it what I just left the library for? Is it the or phone? Is it something? You get yeah, a phone message? I get phone message. So okay. just blanket you if something at the library. Yeah. That's you know, I used to get those phone messages, too. And you're right. You don't know, especially with several things at home. Yes, sure. yes. That's why I switched over to the email messages, because they tell you exactly what, what is on hold for you. So I just do that online, right? I don't think they, you can. Yeah. Don't they tell you you got on your email? Don't they shoot you an email? They do. Yeah. Right. They yeah. do, but they don't. Yeah, they don't they 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 ask for it. Yeah. Only if you yeah. right. In the migration, yeah. it was they kept talking about different carriers, and you know, it was a complicated kind of transfer. So mm -hmm. I think that some of them maybe did not go across mm -hmm. correctly. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing that's what it is. I wish I was able to. You know, talk person, yeah. but well, and the fact that she thinks the board doesn't think her complaint is important. I know, I'm kind of like, disgusted by that too. It's like, yeah. I don't even know yeah. when you this know. came up. <laughs> <laughs> I know, so what? Uh, absolutely. That's the way Yeah, well, you know, you yes. gotta leave your name and yeah. And realistically, sure. when you have the size migration we did, we really didn't have that much of an issue. If that's an issue, right. okay. Yeah, yeah, it was solid. Right All right. Okay, um, I will now entertain a motion to uh, <laughs> adjourn the meeting. And Penny, thank you for your. No, it was, it was, it was very hard. Do we second? have a second? Second. So you're busy. Uh, Who's second? Linda. Linda. <laughs> Greg, can I ask you one and then a real quick question? Okay. Yes. I thought we Carolyn chose what's in Carolyn this Carolyn. I, 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 I sorry, that was done. Oh, okay. Diane? Diane, yes. Diane? Yes. What do I want? You want to stay here all night? Yes. Well, so that's the one for it. And special reserve. Is the 